ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to talk over this cutscene because there's no dialogue in it that I can remember. Uh, welcome to the Elder Scrolls Total War, a mod which in the past I, I'd never really done anything with because I played a very early version of it and I wasn't super impressed, if I'm honest. But the mod, as you could probably see by this intro cinematic right here, has come a long way since then. Back when I last played it, it was a very, very basic mod. But nowadays, it's pretty darn good. Um, I should mention, however, that uh, we're not playing the regular version of it you get from ModDB. Uh, I'm playing it with the unofficial patch. So-called unofficial patch. I say it's so-called because it, it's not really a patch. It actually l adds loads and loads of new gameplay features and stuff and new factions and new campaigns and things. It's a huge expansion of the original mod because I think the original mod makers, I, I think they might have stopped working on it. Um, for, 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 a, for a number of years now and so someone else has come along and made this unofficial patch and essentially it's just continuing development of the mod to the point where you see it now where it's um, it's actually pretty darn good it's up to the standards I would expect from a Medieval 2 mod and the standards I expect from Medieval 2 mods these days are very very high because I mean if you're a long time viewer of the channel you will have no doubt seen us play Divide and Conquer for example and you, you'll know what I'm talking about in that case and uh, this mod is, is is getting up there. It's still a bit rough in places. Um, I've still had a number of crashes while playing around with it. I've... Um, th there's still a few uh, rough elements to it here and there, like... Uh, like uh, the battle map voices for units are still the vanilla medieval ones, so... Uh, for example, you'll have dark elves that sound like medieval Germans, which is sort of hilarious. Um, but only on the battle map. On the campaign map, they've got proper voices from you know, the Elder Scrolls games. Um, so it's still sort of very much in development a bit, but um, I thought we'd stream a bit of it. I thought about doing a YouTube series of it, actually, but then I kind of discovered while I was testing it that it's maybe not the most stable mod ever at the moment, so maybe I'm not going to do a huge YouTube series with it just yet, but stream it a bit on Twitch? Why the heck not? Yeah, it has a lot of like if you, you you click on your you click on your little unit of ordinators and tell them to move and you'll you'll get a you've got a very throaty yeah mein Kaiser back from them. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. So um, <laughs> you have to get used to that a bit. Um, so here it is. Uh, I'm wondering right now about audio settings and things because I I haven't balanced this for Twitch like at all. That's probably fine right there. Uh, let me just check that the unit scale is on huge. Good, yes. I, I play another mod from time to time that requires you to set the unit scale to small. Um, and uh, sometimes I forget to change it back. So. so this is the Elder Scrolls Total War mod. Um, we have a bunch of things to choose from. There's historical battles. I have no idea if these work. I think I haven't tried these, but someone on the Discord did, and they said it crashed him to desktop immediately after trying to load them, which is a bit of a shame, but there's a few here. The Red Ring Battle, Battle of Kringain Field, which is from Daggerfall, some of you may recall. Battle for Sankator, Battle for Dragonstar. I don't... I'm not aware of where, whether or not any of those work. Uh, you can do custom battles, um, and you have the main Septim campaign, which is probably the one we're going to play, I think, today. Um, where you have the map of Tamriel with all of the factions. Although the map is a bit weird. See, if you click on some factions, it goes full screen. If you click on others, it goes very small. See what I mean about this this mod having a few rough areas? Um, that's one of them. But um, anyway, this this particular campaign, it has lots of emergent events in it. And it starts off in... 428 the third era 421 i think or something around it starts around the, the time that morrowind starts i think um the elder scrolls 3 that is uh you have other campaigns you can play though if you go to all campaigns you can do second era black drake campaign the three banners war which i, I think both of these have something to do with the elder scrolls online if i recall i, I don't really know much about it because I haven't played that game very much. 
Um, there's the Vardenfell Provincial map, which is literally just... <laughs> we're going to be getting a bit of this, folks. Medieval 2 Total War has encountered an unspecified error and will now exit. So, uh, welcome back to my desktop. Hold on one moment. Uh, this is, this is going to happen a lot, I'm afraid. Hopefully not too much, but, um, there's a, there's a long-standing issue with, with Medieval 2 and, um, the campaign faction selection screen being bugged like if you click on it too many times it crashes the game and that's been a thing for, since like forever so anyway uh, if I go all campaigns again you go the Vardenfell provincial map it's literally just Vardenfell I think slightly expanded in scale but you've literally just got the Empire Telvanni Redoran the Ashlanders Indoril Plalu House Dagoth and the Undead um, available to choose from. With their various start locations. I have played a little bit of this campaign. It's actually quite a nice one. I enjoy it. I played a bit of it as Redoran recently. It's pretty decent. Um, you've also got the Great War. So you can play a Cyrodiil. You've got the Aldmeri Dominion. All of that stuff. And then you've got the White Gold Concordates a few years later, and then you've got the Stormkite Rebellion, which I have played a little bit of as well. I've been doing an Empire campaign with this one, which is obviously set around the time of the Elder Scrolls V. So you've got the Stormcloaks, you've got the Empire, you've got Halfingar, which represents the Loyalist Nords, I think, and so on. Um, Morrowind is a hot mess because reasons... And, uh, you know, the starting positions of different factions, the characters they have available, uh, scripted events, etc., all, all accurately reflect the time period it's supposed to be set in. There's also one that's called Fourth Underscore Era, which I've not messed around with because I don't know what the difference... As far as I can tell, there seems to be no difference between that and the Stormcloak Rebellion one. But something about the name Fourth Underscore Era makes me think it might be a bit of a work in progress. <laughs> so I've left that one alone. Um, as I said, we're going to be doing the main Septim campaign after I've reloaded the game again because, as you can see, Medieval 2 has its issues. Um, so let's go ahead and load that again, shall we, please? Fences when you feel like working. Thank you. Run mod. If something goes wrong, try to run the program with administrator rights. I already am. Actually, no. That's really bad advice, I found, because I did try to run it with administrator rights, and I found that it, if you do that, it crashes the game on launch. Quite mysterious, really, but there it is. Um, welcome to Let's Stream Sorcerer Dave's desktop at random intervals. Yes, pretty much. Um, so anyway, Septim campaign. Um, I don't want to make a big long thing of this. I don't want to be streaming this for months. So I thought we'd do a very small, limited kind of campaign here. Uh, I'll run through most of the factions available. Obviously, you've got the Empire, which, um, as you can see by the map, they don't just rule all of Tamriel because that would be really boring. What they actually rule is basically Cyrodiil and a selection of outposts around Tamriel. So, like, they rule some bits of Ardenfell, a little bit of Solstheim. I believe they have a, a fort down here in Black Marsh and other things like that outpost dotted around all over the place and what they also have is a bunch of sort of client kingdoms like the kingdom of Daggerfall, Wayrest, Sarnhelm, the clans of Awesome, a bunch of factions on the map that are allied, explicitly allied to the Empire rather than being ruled directly by them to keep life interesting if you do want to play as the Empire. Um, there's also I should have mentioned it. I totally skipped over it somehow. There's also the Oblivion Crisis campaign, which starts with well, it's the events of the Elder Scrolls Three Oblivion with the Daedra invading and whatnot. And you can actually play as the Daedra in that one if you want to. You can play as Meryn Stegon, and it's quite fun. Um, but I, I, and I did have a go with it, and I had an absolute giggle with it. I thought I was having a great time. Only problem was that I, I after about 20 turns in, I came to an, a repeating end turn crash, which basically just... <laughs> meant I couldn't continue the campaign, so proceed at your own peril with that one. Um, admittedly, at the time, I was playing it without the latest hotfix, so your mileage may vary, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't get very far with that campaign.
It was fun though. It was because they have a hilariously overpowered roster, the, the Daedra. And I believe if you play the Septim campaign, the Oblivion Christ, Crisis will happen as a scripted event eventually. Um, I don't know if it's a certain number of turns into the game or if Uriel Septim dies, but um, it will actually happen at some point during the campaign. Along with a few other things, I think there's a scripted Akaviri invasion at some point that could occur at random. Uh, along with a few other things like that. So, yeah, anyway, uh, factions available. What do we got? We got the Empire. We got the... We've got two Hammerfall factions. We've got the Clan of Crown and the Clan of Forebears. We've got a bunch of Daggerfall... I say Daggerfall factions. They're, you know, High Rock factions. You've got the Kingdom of Daggerfall. You've got Wayrest. Evermore. That changed the map again, that one did. It's there, they're the pink faction over here. The lilac faction over there. Um, the Orsima, the Orcs. Uh, Sharnhelm, which is up there, next door to the Orcs. Um, you've got Harfingar. Which is apparently at this point in history ruled by High King Ragnar the Snowshod. And I think you've got East March, which at this point is like a a vassal of Halfingar, I think. They're not the Stormcloaks in this time period. They're just, just East March. Uh, you got the Great House Redoran. Oh, it's crashed again. Jolly good. Anyway, I'll go through the rest. You got House Redoran. You got the Ashlanders. You got House Telvani. You got House Indoril, which in this time period is is not so much House Indoril, and it's more the Tribunal Temple. So you get Vivek and Elmalexia as like usable characters. House Hlalu. Uh, House Dagoth. House Drez, the Undead, which are a bit of a weird and interesting faction that are led by Manamarco, and they're scattered all over the map. Um, you got the Argonians, you've got whoever they are down at the bottom. I'm going to have to reload the game, aren't I? God damn it. <laughs> I, I, it's amazing that all these years we've still not managed to find a fix for that particular bug. been a thing since the earliest days of medieval 2 total war modding essentially if you if you load if you open the campaign map too many times or if you click on too many factions on the campaign screen too many times the game just crashes and i don't think anyone's ever figured out why that happens or how to fix it it just seems to be a bug left in the game by creative assembly um who's this at the bottom kingdom of pelotine uh so that's a elsewhere faction you've got the kingdom of an equina Valenwood, High Kingdom of the Somerset Isles, and then that's that's the lot, I think. And then at the side, you've got, yeah, Dagoth, Halalu, and the Undead. A bug left in a CA game? Not possible. Hopefully one day, if, uh, if Feral come along and do a remaster of Medieval 2 like they did for Rome, um, that bug will at long last be finally fixed. But um, no news on that currently. Hopefully it's in the works, but we don't really know. Anyway, uh, I thought, as I said, I want to kind of make a limited thing of this. I don't want to. I don't want to be playing this campaign for ages and ages and ages. We didn't really finish the dwarf campaign in Divide and Conquer because it was just taking too long, and I lost interest. Um, so I'm going to keep this one fairly limited. And I thought we'd play as the tribes of Ashlanders, led by Ashkan Sulmatul. Um, the Ashlanders are the Dunman nomads of the Morrowind Wastelands. They claim to be the direct descendants of the Almeri peoples who followed the prophet Veloth into the lands now called Morrowind, blah, blah, blah. If you play Morrowind, you know who these people are. They're the Ashlander tribes who you meet in the game. Um, now, a fun feature of playing as a Morrowind faction in this game is that the Nerevarin is a character that comes along and you are given a choice of whether or not you want to have the Nerevarin in your faction or you don't. And I thought it might be a giggle if we play as, play as the Ashlanders and we have the Nerevarine on our side and we basically just conquer Vardenfell. Drive out the Outlanders and the, the, the settled Great House Dunmer and just occupy all of Vardenfell for ourselves and defeat Dagoth while we're at it. I thought that might be quite fun. That's a very That's a relatively small goal. Um, but it's a fun one to work towards. If it, depending on how quickly we get it done, we could maybe expand to the mainland a bit as well, but I think beyond that, not so much. 
Um, I've not played as the Ashlanders before. I don't really know what to expect from them. Apparently, they have the best Guar cavalry, but apparently, Guar cavalry are pretty shockingly bad compared to regular cavalry. So, it's sort of like we've got the best of the worst here when it comes to cavalry. Strong missile units, smaller roster, but cheaper upkeep. Um, factional features are tribal missions, strong racial traits, and can go horde and can recruit in camps. Uh, I've never played a horde faction in Medieval 2 before, so that'll be fun. Um, campaign difficulty. This is important because if you go higher than medium, it adds extra scripts to the game, like garrison scripts. And garrison scripts have always been one of those things in the older Total War games that have, for me, always introduced bugs. And I like to try and avoid using garrison scripts if I can. So I'm going to leave the campaign difficulty on medium so that, that doesn't become a thing. And the battle difficulty I will put on... I guess I'll put it on hard? I could put it on very hard if we wanted a serious challenge. But I'll, I'll leave it on hard and just see how we get on. Um, and yeah, we're going to play as the Ashlanders. This could be a giggle or it could be absolute torture. It depends how bad our roster of units is, to be completely honest. Um, yeah, we'll find out. <sighs> Big bad of this campaign is Dagoff uh, causing repeated CTTs. <laughs> Random crashes to desktop are fine. Little immersion breaking, but fine. But if we get a repeating one, like every time you hit end turn in a certain turn, the game crashes, then we're then we're basically screwed. So, as we go into this, folks, bear in mind, that might happen. We might get 20 turns in and then just find that we can't continue the campaign because of a random crash that keeps repeating. There you go, right, we're in. Alchemy, dungeons, missions, and blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah, this is all stuff added by the so-called unofficial patch, which is more, as I said, of an unofficial expansion. Um, we'll get to these. Um, the, the Basically, the map is covered in dungeon forts. Essentially, uses the forts mechanic to provide us with dungeons on the map, which are full of random beasties that we can sometimes get missions to go and, uh, you know, attack for rewards. Um... Yeah, at war with the dungeon faction, their own, their own minor faction that's added to the game for gameplay purposes. So here we are. We need this guy. This is Don't Lose Me. Uh, this little NPC here is the guy that provides us with those dungeon missions. So I need to put him in a camp somewhere and leave him alone and not, not, get, not lose him, if possible. So, welcome to Vardenfell. We've got all of Tamriel here, though, of course. There's Solsheim up there. Uh, Dagon fell up there. Port Telvanis is right there. Um, Necrum's around there. You know all this, all this stuff. There's Mournhold, I think. Hlalu capital, it says. Yeah, I guess it's controlled by House Lali because King Helseth is from House Lali, right? Um, but yeah, you got Mournhold there, and you've got we've got a few mainland camps. I didn't realize that was a thing. That's interesting. Hmm. What do I want to do with you guys? Scum. We've got a little Farseer. Be praised, Sarah. Munab. He's like a priest, essentially, I think. Darashon, thanks very much for 26 months of subage. Much appreciated. Uh, right, I didn't realize we were going to have some mainland Ashlander camps. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't know what to do with them. Honestly, we've got one over here as well. Kagesh tribe camp. Three blessings, Sarah. Alma Alexia be praised, Sarah. Three blessings. Sarah. You guys priests as well. Alma. Oops. Praise, Sorry, I clicked outside the window there. It's in boardless windowed mode, so and the cursor doesn't lock to the uh, the game, so it's easy to accidentally click outside. So Kagesh tribe camp, we've got Sakula rib. Oh my god, Ashlander names. I this is an unforeseen element of this faction choice I did not consider. I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of the names of our characters. It's like playing as the Welsh. 
Uh, the Kagesh tribe is an Ashlander tribe that lives in the Stonefalls region of mainland Morrowind. They are traditionally hated and feared by the settled Dunmer of the region. He's an Ashlander, which gives him a bunch of stat bo boosts and... Okay, that was weird. The game lost, lost focus there and the, the sound stopped. The Dunmer, also known as the Dark Elves, blah blah blah. Sense of justice, natural commander, religiously proper, good with taxes, and then he's a night fighter, apparently. He's got a, a whole load of command. He's loyal. He has piety. What's our religion, then? Oh, I see. This isn't actually a settlement. It's a camp. It's like a fort. Interesting. We can recruit mercenary units here. But it's not an actual proper settlement. Okay. I guess this is part of that whole horde faction thing, right? Man, this is good. We, well, I guess I guess priority number one then in that case is for us to actually take a damn settlement. Okay, no, the Zainab camp is an actual, is an honest to goodness settlement. We can build stuff here, like roads. Stables. Something, something about the Ashlanders building roads just feels wrong. But I might do it anyway. Although it doesn't seem to gain us anything according to this. When I click that, we don't get any bonuses appearing on here. Interesting. Barrier, a baluster range, leather tanner, market. Stables. Little Gwar stables, I love it. We recruit right now, Morrowind Spear Militia. That's about it. Diplomat. Merchant who's missing his unit card. And a curate who's also missing his unit card. It's a priest type character, essentially. So, what is our. We're Daedric cults, technically. Yeah, I guess we are. It's, you know, Ashlander ancestor worship, right? It's technically Daedra worship. So, our official religion is Daedric cults. However, the majority of people in this region apparently are tribunal temple or. 10% of them are a cult of Dagoth which is not good. So we've got a bit of a religious strife here, which is unhelpful. Have we got a, a little priest character here somewhere? We've got like a whole bunch down down this way, but... The Arab and Imsum tribe camp. Let's see. What's our financials like? We're going to be we're immediately losing money as soon as we start the game. Although we do have a big pile of 50, 50 grand to play with. So we should probably invest that in economic buildings right away. Like a market. Although, again, it doesn't seem to be adding much there. Although it might be because I don't have trade rights with anyone. Um, does the leather, ta leather tan against anything? No. Nope. Okay. Interesting. Well, what I need then, I think, is I need a, a diplomat to begin with. And we got the other tribe camps here. The Urshalaku and we got Ashkar and Sulmatul, who's our faction leader, I think. So what I'm thinking is like we need to we need to gather the tribes together. That's what I'm thinking we need to do. We need to migrate. We need to get you all out of your camps here. And get you to Vardenfell. Get your asses to Vardenfell. So we can all gather together and uh, and then start making war upon the upon the Enwars and the uh, and the settled people. Look at that little little dungeon fort. Enemy fort. I can't see what it's called, but it's probably full of Dwemer things because it's a little Dwemer ruin. Love it. We also got around here else. Not that I can see. Uh, this is wilderness. It's not no, not owned by anybody. Does that mean I can't build any watchtowers? Yeah, I can't. That's annoying. Okay. Wasn't expecting that sound effect. That was weird.
So I think we need to get everybody to design our camp. I'm not interested. So I'm thinking that's where we need to start from because that's I'm our one to. permanent settlement. I'm not going to like this. What is it, Sarah? So we're going on a journey, everybody. Oh, there's obviously Dagothur as Red Mountain itself. Full of nasty sixth house guys. They'll be trying to break through the ghost fence at the earliest opportunity. Uh, you can see there's Aldrune. Uh, I assume Balmor is around here somewhere. I can I tell you what I can do is I can toggle off Fog of War so we can see everything. So I'll give, give you a little tour of the map, everybody, because I know you're probably dying to see it all. Um, so you got the Telvani over here. Um, we've got... Yeah, there we are, Bethuand. Dungeon Fort. Still can't see what the units in there are, but hey. Margan down there. It's a rebel village of Ashlanders. I could conquer that straight away if I wanted to, actually. I mean, I could try anyway. I don't know if Sulmatul's little army here is up to the job necessarily, but Margan might be a nice place to go for. Ashal Mawia, another dungeon fort. You got Nisus itself, but you've also got the Imperial Fort next to it with, with Darius in it, which is a nice touch. Out Velothi, which is a Red Rand town, obviously, there's a Red Rand general there. I like that the Red Rand generals have little Morrowind style ebony armor on them, by the way. I've heard a lot about you, Poutlander. Go ahead. And I love that when you click on them, they have little voice lines from Morrowind. It's neat. You got the Skarl up here in Solsheim. Fort Frostmoth, Raven Rock, Blacklight, Silgrad, Fungal Grotto. Mmm, delicious. Fort Dawnguard over there in Skyrim. Romania, you got Vivek, which has its own little unique model. Ebonheart Castle, and then you got actual Ebonheart itself on the other side. More like Ma, another unique model. The Shurdams. That's quite nearby to us, actually, although it's just a dungeon fort, so unless we get a mission to actually attack that, there's no point in doing so, because it won't get us anything. Um, Temple of Merrick's a bit anachronistic. Well, here's the thing. It's... it's the, the, the game spans multiple eras, right? So... The, the Temple of Mirak is not necessarily really very relevant in, in this campaign start period, but it will be relevant in, say, the fourth era start period. If you're doing a fourth era campaign, then Temple of Mirak absolutely deserves to be there. You probably get a mission to go and take it with the Dragonborn, actually. Because the Dragonborn's like the Nerevarine. He pops up in your campaign as a playable character. Um, there's Windhelm. There's Boulderfall Cave. There's Riften. There's Iverstead. There's Helgen. Hilgren's Tomb. Corvignund. Winterhold. Dawnstar. Zinchaleft. Fort Dunstad. Fort Greymoor. Rorikstead. Fort Sunguard. The Karth Spire. Karth Weston. Morthal. Solitude. Again, another custom model. Very nice. Castle Volkehar, which has some interesting gameplay effects with it, I think. If you if you take it, I think, or if you're playing as the Undead Faction, you can send a character there to become a vampire, if I recall. I remember reading that in the notes somewhere for this game. But Markarth, again, another unique map model thing. Forgotten Vale. Uh, we go move over here. We've got uh, the Reach Men. They're kind of they're, they're scattered around the map in a few places. They're an unplayable faction at the moment, um, but they control Fort Sunguard at the moment as well as Druidach. A few other bits up here, Dunlane. Um, what else we got over here? Bunch of little minor faction towns. The Orcs are around here somewhere. I imagine a bit further over here, maybe. Yeah, there's Orsinium. You already have someone to do your fighting for you. Don't need me. I love I love that when you click on the guys on the map, they say things, just like in the vanilla game. We seek passage, not battle, Outlander. Uh, you got who are these guys? Evermore. It's another cool custom model thing there. 
you've got all the Hammerfell stuff down here. Sentinel. I was hoping maybe it would have a unique model, but then I suppose Sentinel. Kind of does look like that in Daggerfall, to be fair, actually. Uh, you've got Dureni Tower, which does have a cool... You have the, the actual settlement thing itself there, but you also have this huge, awesome model on the map. Which is neat. Uh, they got all this stuff down here. Glenumbra, Daggerfall. All of that stuff. If you look over here, we've actually got... Um, Oblivion. One of the realms of... I think this is... Is this meant to be Cold Harbor? It might be meant to be Cold Harbor in the top left corner. You've got Molag Baal up there on the top of that mountain. There are no rules in battle for a true warrior. Uh, because... You, I don't think you can do anything with this in this campaign, although I might be wrong, actually. I don't know. But um, if you're playing one of the second era campaigns, um, you can travel through Oblivion Gate things into Cold Harbor. And likewise, if you go to the bottom right of the map, you have the Deadlands, which is Merriam's Dagon's hangout. Sigilum Sanguish, Sigil Keep, Flesh Spire, Brooding Fortress, all the, all the rest of it. I am not righteous. Why does God not stop? Um, you've got a whole bunch of stuff down here. And there's an actual Oblivion Gate right there. Um, when the Oblivion Crisis starts, again, Oblivion Gates pop open. They can move through them. And via some hang handy, awesome scripting. And you can actually move through them as well. And you can invade Oblivion with an army if you want to. Which is pretty neat. Um, what else we got? Here's Black Marsh. There's not a huge amount going on down here, to be honest with you. I, I, I suspect the Argonians probably have a slightly boring campaign because it's pretty much just them surrounded by random greyed-out provinces. And that's kind of it, really. There's there's an undead fort down here. And then there's an imperial city down here in Lilmoth, and that's kind of it. But then you got Elsewhere, which is neat. All of their stuff... You've got Valenwood with all of their stuff. You've got the Somerset Isles over here. A little Imperial Settlement there at Dawnbreak. And you've got the actual Somerset Isles Kingdom or whatever. The Dominion is here, and we're watching you. Uh, you've got the what's it what's this called? I'm trying to grain a valuable resource. No, I'm pretty sure that's not what it's called. But uh, it's another one of them fancy towers up there next to Cloudrest. I wonder if the Sigic Isles are here. Sometimes there's a few little extra bits at the edge of the maps here. Like the Oblivion Realms that have some things to do with them. There's one up there as well. one up here as well. I think these are related to some in-game quests that you can get given to your faction. I'm not really sure how they work. But anyway. And then you've got Cyrodiil. Which at the moment is all covered in snow because we're in the middle of winter. But there is the Imperial City. With an absolutely gigantic custom model. you got Akato. you got Adamus Philida. With the correct portraits and everything which is just great. Got a bunch of other people here. Pretty cool. You'll notice that Fort Dirich is currently occupied by rebels for some reason. Um, there's an emergent faction that pops up called the Kingdom of Cyrodiil, which I think is meant to represent Titus Mead. And that, that'll pop up sometime after the Oblivion Crisis, I believe. There's Leowen down there. Deep Scorn Hollow. Wendelbeck. I is here's the thing. Cropsford, ah oh yeah, Cropsford is on the map. There we go. It's a rebel village actually in this start date, but Probably full of goblins. There's Broomit, there's Cloud Rue the Temple, there's some undead. What's interesting is that the voice files are different for these guys. Last time I played the game, the Undead and the Daedra, they had actual, like, uh, 
voice files taken from Oblivion for the Dramora. So they sounded like Dramora when you clicked on them. Um, but for some reason, they don't in this campaign. And that's very weird. Don't know why. Anyway, there you go. There's the tour of the map. You'll notice there are undead settlements like this littered all over Tamriel. They are playable, the undead. You can play as them. Their faction leader is Mana Marco. And um, I gather they have quite a unique campaign experience. They are a very, very weird faction to play as, but they are playable. Anyway, it's enough gawking at the map. I thought I'd get that out of the way, though, because I'm sure some people were dying to see it all. Oh, and I suppose we can... Yeah, here's, here's Dagoth there itself. You got his Ash Vampire buddies. Odrasal, Indusal, Terrainalal. All them main dungeons that you go through in the main quest of Morrowind. Dagoth them in over there. Presumably, the main man himself is sat, sat there inside the volcano. Doing whatever it is he does. Dancing like on the starting soon screen, I imagine. But uh, we must defeat him in this campaign if we can get far enough without it crashing repeatedly. What do you want? So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna move you there. We're moving what you that you way. Want? I'm tempted to send you back this way to go and take Margan, but I don't know if I will. In fact, I don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should. We need to gather up the other mainland tribes as well. You. We need you to... Oh, what's the best way to do this? I suppose we need to get you to the the sea, don't we? And then we can use... We can hire mercenary boats to go across the water with. So... We'll, we'll bring these two Ashlander priests with you. And then... The very end, Sioux tribe. And the Mabrigash tribe. You guys need to get up here too. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. That is quite yes. I've been around. I, can I could just spam them, to be fair. Three blessings. I wonder if that would fix it. Because you notice at the moment we've got minus six grand projected profits at the moment. And that will keep just going down and down and down until we take more settlements. I'm wondering if actually it might be better to just disband all of these. Because up the upkeep costs for them are substantial. It might be easier to just disband them all and then just take the actual characters across instead and leave these guys here because I could just recruit more later, right? Because it's going to take these guys ages to get all the way over there. Like, we're talking multiple, multiple turns of just them eating away into our budget and not contributing anything. So, I... Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna disband all these. Might be a mistake, I don't know. But my instinct here is to disband them if you're not using them. I've played the Western Roman Empire campaign enough times in Barbarian Invasion to know that if you're not using an army... Just friggin' disband it. They'll move faster without their troops anyway, as you can see, so. Annoying outlanders. I don't wish to be seen with you. What do you want? There we go. Annoying outlanders. Where are you going? So now our project yeah, we're down to minus 1791, and that a lot of that will probably be accounted for by the fact that I recruited a diplomat and stuff. Sarah. At least our deficit isn't quite as bad. I might be able to up taxes here. Oh, wait, no, I can't. No. The Zynab camp is considered a castle as far as the game is concerned, and I can't change taxes. A little bit annoying, but never mind. That is quite I'm enough. not sure the Ashlanders even have a concept of taxes anyway, so... <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I could build a market, but at the moment it's not like it's going to get me anything, so... Be a waste of money if I did that. I like the smaller, quicker blades. You. We just need to make sure you don't die or anything like that, because you are the guy who gives us dungeon missions, paying their taxes in Ashiams, yeah. Oh, 
Uh, well, the thing is, I don't really care about the mainland just seeing it because the thing is, these aren't. In case you just got here, folks, these aren't actually settlements; they're forts. These camps here, they're forts. They don't get us any money. These things. How my Alexia be praised, Sarah. Where are you going? Whatever it is, I'm not interested. So we gain nothing by keeping them. We can recruit some units in them because they're scripted that way for the sake of the Ashlanders, but Three blessings, we get Three nothing from those forts. So, and since my goal in this campaign is to basically just conquer Vardenfell and hang the rest of Tamriel, um, I don't really care about the mainland. So I think I'm just going to migrate everybody north over to here, and I may start by. The thing is, we got to think now really about carefully about who we want to attack first. We should probably pay attention to who's allied with who. Because I bet you anything Hlalu is allied with the Empire. Yes, as, you, as I explained earlier, the Empire has a lot of allies. They've got Harfinger, Wayrest, Sharnhelm, Evermore, the Forebears, the Crowned, the Orsimer, Somerset Isles, Valenwood, Palatine, Anequina, Blackmarsh, and House Hlalu. So maybe don't attack Hlalu just yet. Um, let's see, Redoran, they are allied with Inderil and Halalu. Talvani are allied with Inderil and Halalu. Drez are allied with Inderil and Halalu. Inderil are allied with the other four. Looks like they're all kind of sort of allied with each other. Except for Dagoth. <laughs> they already start at war with Inderil. And Hlalu has buckets of allies, so... I'm thinking... Who are Red around allied with? If we attack the Talvani right now, we're probably not going to need to worry about Indra or Hlalu, because they're just too far away. Mind you, actually, they are relatively close to these lads here, but these lads need to move this way, so... Yes, I've been around, but I can tell you been there, done that. What now? Alternatively, we could go the other way, back across the Ashlands and attack Redoran. Although taking out Talvani earlier might be better, because purely because they have mages, and I assume, because mages are a very expensive high-tier unit in this game. Um, they're probably not going to have that many to start with, but they will later. So killing off Talvani sooner rather than later might be a good idea. And I say killing off. I mean, I don't really have any interest in going to the mainland. But potentially I might actually have to in order to get them to leave me alone. So it's never that simple, is it really? We do start off right next to them, though, which does make things... A little simpler from that point of view. I can already tell. And we need to start conquering sooner rather than later because we are running a deficit. So actually, yeah, no, it's going to be Talvani. We 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 bully first, I think. I can already tell. I'm not going to like this. Does the game have a method of letting mages work in battle? Yeah, essentially they just chuck fireballs of varying magnitudes depending on how good the unit is. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. It's a bit like having a bunch of infantry that can throw sort of like siege weapon style fireballs at the enemy. The, the higher tier ones are actually quite devastating. Like your... Uh, arcane university uh, uh, mage units that you can get as the empire they they're, they can do some serious damage and i imagine the talvani have something just as good if not better later down their tech tree so what about masera what do you want all right hopefully i'm not missing anything No, I think we're good. All right. End turn.
kind of weird that they picked that for the end turn noise. Because uh, there's a slightly Pavlovian effect on the brain, that one, if you've played a lot of Skyrim. <laughs> Makes you go, ooh, ooh, time to pick a perk. Oh, wait. We're not playing Skyrim. A lot of scripting in this mod, though, uh, unfortunately. So the end turn times are a little bit on the lengthier side. Used to have to put up with this all the time back in the day, though, so I'm used to it. It doesn't bother me. Gives me a chance to look at the chat. So the sound of the turn counter leveling up. Yeah, I guess so. I love the um, the user interface in this mod. It changes based on what faction you're playing as naturally. Um, but we've got like the Morrowind style user interface at the moment, and it looks beautiful. For some reason, that's a thing. With, with Medieval 2 mods as well. They always seem to have absolutely gorgeous UI design. Doesn't matter whether you're playing this or or Third Age or Broken Crescent or Europa Barbarorum 2 or any of it. They all seem to have absolutely gorgeous, beautiful user interfaces. Little on the lengthy side, yeah. Although I have noticed the first turn, the first end turn you do in this campaign does take a little longer than the subsequent ones. I think it's probably because it's setting up a bunch of scripts. There we go, that's what I was waiting for. Prophecy will soon be fulfilled. Four clans of the Ashlanders named him Nerevarine. Three great houses are called Importator. Lord Nerevar appears to walk among us once more. More so, the self-proclaimed incarnate wants to join the ranks of your great house, or in our case, the Ashlanders faction, I guess. Seeks to get your support as well. Will you accept his claims and treat him as one of your own, completing ancient prophecy? If you'll cast this one away as an imposter, he won't be able to become the true Nerevarine and save the world from the Sharmat deck of Ur. Uh, yes, we will. Which means we get the Nerevarine, be praised, who is a very, very, very good general. He has Ebony Arm, which gives him a whopping plus five hit points. Um, and uh, he comes with an army as well. Ashland Cavalry, Ashland Scouts, Ashland Watchers, Spearmen and Swordsmen and Javelinmen. Bunch of free troops, essentially. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. Please. Not yes, I think I will tell you you've been there. Move you over there to that one. But like just like that, we've pretty much got an army. Yes, I've been around. I can tell you have been there, done that. I'm gonna build a little watchtower. War! The tribes of Ashlands and Great House Dagoth. Apparently we're at war with Oh, it's because we've it's because we did this. It's because we accept the Nerevarine, which automatically puts us at war with House Dagoth. Um, the reason you don't start off at war with House Dagoth is because I think if you if you turn down the Nerevarine, you can actually go down an alternate path where you side with House Dagoth if you want to. Which is probably interesting. Not this time for us, though. These are all trait increases for, for the Nerevarine, aren't they? Yeah. Cool. What do you want? All right, time to go take Voss, my friend. I've not had a look so far, but I'm I'm curious to see whether or not the Talvani have unique annoying outlanders um battle maps. Yes, I do wish to declare war. Although it won't be this turn, because I can't quite get there this turn. How much would a unit of freelance Ash Raiders cost me? 950, and the upkeep is 315. I think I'll see if I can get by without them for now. And we do have a diplomat. Uh, for what bloody good he'll be useful for, I don't know. Not plan to do a lot of diplomacy in this campaign, honestly. Uh, 
Ironically, I could probably do with trading with getting trade rights with House Telvani, but I'm about to attack him, so I guess I'll not. Alexia be praised, Sarah. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. But I, I guess we have a we have oh, a diplomat now. Oh, sire. What to do with you? I don't really know. I guess we'll send him this way. Tomorrow's journey planned out, sire. But Sarah. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. I'll Alexia be praised, Sarah. Oh, must make but sure Sarah, I remember to move you boys yes, as well. I've been around. I can tell you've been there. I'll Alexia be praised, Sarah. Three blessings. Move Sarah. you that way. Yes, move you up here to the coast. Where are you going? I'll Alexia be praised, Sarah. What do you want? Yes, I've been around. I can tell you've been there. What is it, Sarah? Right. Slaves, a valuable resource, apparently. Netch skin, another valuable trade resource. I like that there's a little unique watchtower model if you're playing as the Dark Elf faction, by the way. That's neat. I'll Alexia be praised, Sarah. Okay. Siege to Voss, Aaron is going to be so pissed. He might be an actual character. I should check. I can already tell. I'm not going to like this. Ula Bell, soldier training. Who's Ula Bell? What is it, Sarah? I'm Alexia. Be Your Gula Khan Ushmusa. Ula Bell, this guy. What do you want? Currently, no mercenaries are able to recruit in this region. That's annoying. We need mercenary ships to get you guys across here. It, well, but failing that, we just capture a port and build time. a ship, I suppose. Oh, hello. There's a red around army. If you'll excuse me, I don't have time for you right now. Or ever. But Sarah, he doesn't like us very much. Yes, I've been around. I can tell you. Been three blessings. Sarah. Can you three hire a ship? No, you can't. Sarah. Oh, annoying. I've done it before in this mod. I've hired, hired mercenary boats to travel across water with. So I know it can be done. It's just we're getting a little unlucky right now, I think. Uh, right, you. Let's just dump you in the Zynab camp for now. Send you this way, Ashkan Sulmatul. Ashkan. It's Ashkan, really. It's not Ashkan, but for... For like 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 half a decade I pronounced it Ashcan in my head and I can't get rid of it now. There's Voss. Telvani men at arms. It's the only info I've got right now. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. Yes. Oh there he is. Magister Arian. It's spelt wrong, but I think that's a localization issue because the uh, the mod maker isn't a native English speaker. Um Right. Traits unknown, retinue unknown. Can we have a look at his bodyguard unit? Talbani Masters. Oh gosh. Long range missiles effective against armor. Excellent morale. Dealing with them is going to be fun. Very low defense though, so they're very squishy. At least it's not as bad as dealing with the undead. The undead are really interesting in this mod because they are fearless. They have no morale, uh, which is extremely... I mean, it, like it's unheard of in Total War games, generally speaking. Especially in Medieval 2. In my fourth era Empire campaign, I had to fight a random, random horde of wandering Draugr out here somewhere to the west of Whiterun with my um, Legion garrison at one of the forts. And um, dealing with them was, was interesting because they just wouldn't break and route obviously and, and and that's such a core part of medieval 2's combat normally that i was kind of momentarily lost for what the hell i was going to do Annoying eventually just i had to just do repeated cavalry charges until i'd, I'd killed all the draugr and then the battle finally ended but uh yeah a huge stack of undead in this in this game must be really scary because like they'll never break Oh, 
three blessings, Sarah. All right, let's just do it. Let's attack. What up, Talvani? I'm coming for your fancy magical trinkets. And I will end your pain. I can already tell. I'm not going to like this. Relations worsens with Great House Talvani to poor. You don't say. What is it, Sarah? Um, I guess I could spend some of my money on building roads, but I mean, it's not going to make me any money, I don't think. Apparently, according to this, it's not anyway. We'll, we'll see. I mean, it's making us 396 right now. If we build some roads, see if it changes at all. At the very least, it'll make our armies will be able to travel faster. So What's you do at least get something for roads, even if it doesn't make you any money. I'm not interested. Oh, I forgot to move you, but luckily he's automatically moving. He, they've they've gone for the sort of cannon in air quotes, Nerevarine. You know, the one that's on the back of the box art for the original game, with the spiky hair and the bone mold armor and the Daedric sword. They made some very weird choices though with some of the other characters. At least in the with the Nerevarine, he's just called the Nerevarine. Um, some of the others are really weird, though. Like, I noticed in one game I was playing that the, the Dragonborn is com called something really, really weird, like, like Reg or or Jim. I don't wish to be seen with you. They decided to go with a, a Dragonborn with an actual name, and the actual name is bizarre. What do you want? Yeah, I can't recruit any mercenary ships, so I guess we'll keep just moving this way. Oh, here, here we go. No, no, we can just recruit some bandits, apparently. It's not what I wanted. I want boats. I need boats. This is an honor. Where are you going? Three blessings, Sarah. Oh, hello. Uh, Enderil have broken their alliance with Great House Halalu, and they're fighting, openly fighting the Imperials. That is interesting, yeah. Hmm. What Things gonna get spicy. Right, I'm not gonna move Sulmatul up just now, because I don't want him involved in this battle, because the AR will just do dumb things with his units. I've been, I've played a lot of the more recent Total War games, and... Going back to Medieval 2 is always a bit of a culture shock because you forget that you can't control large 20-unit armies anymore in this game. You just have to surrender the other army to AI control and that's always a terrifically bad idea. So let us do this. Let's bring in the assault. I'm, I'm curious to see if uh, we get a cool, unique battle map for this. Because I've, I've done a bit of a House Redoran campaign with the Vardenfell provincial map. And uh, House Redoran have cool, unique settlements. I'm wondering if the same is true of Telvani. Uh, it doesn't look like it. That's kind of a shame. Never mind. Told you this mod's still a little rough around the edges. Also, apparently the Nerevarine is really shiny. Uh, that seems like a glitch because it's raining. Although, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, don't know what that's about. I've used the Nerevarine before in my Redoran campaign and he came on a Guar and I mounted on a Guar with a cavalry unit and he looked perfectly fine, but... Um, uh, we have the T-1000 Nerevarine apparently in this game with the, with the Ashlanders. Fair enough. All right. I ain't one to judge. All right. Let's get the cavalry at the back here because they're going to be of no use whatsoever. This isn't a later Total War game where I can tell them to dismount tragically. So they're just 
basically going to be useless. They do look quite cool though. Oh yeah, and as I mentioned, our Dark Elves all sound German, which is pretty funny. Some Javelin men as well. We've got our Spear Militia. Ah, oh, man, yeah, our units are pretty, pretty damn terrible, aren't they? This might be a very short campaign. <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys should be at the back as well. We don't need you at the front. More spear militia. We're gonna have to try and overwhelm the enemy with just hordes of dudes in this campaign, clearly. So what have you started out with? Ashland Marksman. That's weird, but okay. The Nerevarine's unit is a bunch of archers, if you're playing as the Ashlanders. Kind of weird. Kind of weird, but okay, fine. And there they are. They've got a bunch of spear militia of their own. They've got Talvani men at arms with the with the mad little cephalopod helms. They're already being shot at by my archers, lovely. Where is their uh There they are. Talvani masters. Which one of you is Arian then? Is it you on the end there with the sword? I think it might be. So it's, it's kind of a shame that there's no uh, unique Talvani settlement things here. There are, as I said, for Redoran. They have the little Alderun style houses and everything. It's great. And obviously the scale is the whole thing in this mod, you know, obviously this isn't the scale as the actual Morrowind game itself, but the way I choose to look at it essentially is that uh, th this mod operates on the same scale that Daggerfall and Arena do in terms of Tamriel's overall size. Use these javelin men. Oh my god, okay. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, I think the Telvani mages are pretty damn good, as it turns out. Might be about to lose my entire army to a bunch of dudes with magic sticks. Oh, there it goes. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty brutal. Not as brutal as that first shot was, but holy crap. My javelin being morons, they are. They're on skirmish mode, that explains it. I want you to chuck your spears over that wall, guy. Oh my god. Medieval two siege battles. Ugh. for the Empire. Stay <laughs> strong and the enemy will be defeated. <laughs> the German voices while you're playing as the Dark Elves is always hilarious to me. I find it extremely amusing. This mod is a little bit, um, well, you know. Which should give you some indication as to just how rough this mod was back when I said it's too rough to even bother playing. What are you doing? You're just going red. Are they charging without orders? They might be. As 
rough as this mod is, it used to be rougher. <laughs> and that's back when people were asking me to play it, too. Like, Dave, 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 you should play Elder Scrolls Total War. And it was... I was like, no. Alright, let's see if we can make some progress here. Now we've finally got through the walls. At this point, if the Telvani want to shoot fireballs at me, they're going to have to blow up their own guys in order to do it. So... Balance of forces are evenly matched. That's probably the best we can hope for in a straight-up slugging match, to be honest. Because we do have some absolute dog poop tier infantry with this faction. I'm not really showing off the mod in its best light here, to be honest with you. I feel kind of bad for that. I didn't realize. I should have tested it beforehand, but yeah, the Ashlanders do not feel like a very finished faction right now. Exhibit A being uh, the Silver Surfer over here. I've been doing an Empire campaign, as I said, in the Fourth Era campaign. It's been far more, in far more impressive. And the... Uh the Marion's Dagon campaign I did, even though it was very short-lived because of the crash, was also very, very cool. I sacked the Imperial City as the Daedra, and it had a unique Imperial City model and everything. Like a siege battle and everything. It was really cool. They had all the districts modeled and, and what have you. How are we getting on right now? early to say, although we have managed to get our spearmen behind them and start chewing up their archers. I'd like to get a bunch of spearmen over here to stab these goddamn mages to death, if at all possible. That would be real nice. For now, though, I think I've, we're doing all we kind of can, really. I've committed virtually everything. Okay, yep, they're still chucking fireballs or whatever those are. See if we can get the archers to shoot the mages. If uh, any of them have got any ammo left. No, our archers are out of ammo. That's a shame. Although, actually, it looks like the old Nerevarine's got a bit of ammo left for his unit, so. Or not. Never mind. The javelin guys are being completely useless, unfortunately. Just standing there, not throwing. You guys might as well just run over here. We've got a route? What's going on here? Oh, they've just pulled back through the gate to attack the spearmen. Well, after them then. We didn't actually batter the gate down, as you can see. We got the ram into position and then they came out to attack us. You guys aren't doing so well. You guys don't seem to be doing great either. You are. What are you? What are you shooting at right now? These mages are just shooting everywhere. Oh my god! Stop! Fucking hell! Right, everyone, move down here, where it's much more difficult for them to hit you. Oh, I know. I tell you what, I might have found a use for the Guar cavalry. I don't know, watchers, raiders, scouts, I'm not sure what's better, honestly. I'll, uh, maybe the raiders. You guys get in there and then go around and then just stab those mages to death. Oh, wait, no, hold on. I'm looking at them right now and I'm thinking the raiders are javelin cavalry by the looks of things, so we probably want the, the watchers because they've got big sticks. In you go. Telvani OP, please no. They're pretty sweet, honestly. Like, that's your character unit for Telvani. Like, one of your family members on the campaign map, this is the unit they get. So, instead of, like, uh, you know, a unit of elite cavalry like most factions would get, or in our case, a bunch of fucking archers for some reason, um, 
the Telvani get a unit of mages which can shoot massive fireballs, and that's actually you know, pretty, pretty friggin' cool. Alright, I'm gonna have to commit you guys to attack them. Oh wow, things are not going well there. You guys need to get involved too. In go the Guas! <laughs> The running animation's kind of kind of hilarious, I'm not gonna lie. Look at him go! Plod, 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 yes. Right. Go and kill those mages for me, please. We, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm having second thoughts about this Ashlander campaign. I'm, I'm, I'm considering maybe actually just switching over to my fourth era Empire one and playing that instead. But we'll see. I will, I'll, I'll see what you guys think. Because right now we're playing with some janky ass Ashlander units on a vanilla battle map and it's not very impressive i'm not gonna i'm gonna be honest it's not giving you me that real elder scrolls vibe at the moment it's a Vardenfell. yeah i don't i don't think so i think the problem is that the ashlanders are just a slightly unfinished faction at the moment and it looks like the Telvani are a little bit as well, because they don't have any custom settlements at the moment. So we're kind of we're kind of playing two slightly unfinished factions off against each other right now. Which is not doing the mod a ton of favours. Wow, this unit's almost completely wiped out. Good heavens. We are we are winning overall, but still. Mine got. Are the Guars at least uh okay. I think the Guars might be getting massacred by the mages, because uh, that's a lot of dead Guars right there. I won't lie, it's not what I was expecting. They've diverted a few spearmen back here to go and skewer me poor guars. I suppose we arguably would have been better off just waiting out the siege instead of assaulting. But that would have been boring, so I didn't do it. Send in the Nerevarine. I don't suppose he had any kind of funky special ability. Just rally troops. Well, at the very least, you're keeping the wizards occupied. They are massacring you, though. And I really didn't expect that. <laughs> oh, look at this stat card. I mean, they've got very good attack. Melee attack 20, which is excellent, but... Only defense 12. They've got, like, no armor. I'm a, I'm a little shocked. I thought they'd die a little bit faster than this. Apparently our marksmen are winning. In spite of being in melee. The old nerve at least you at least you don't fail to pick him out in a crowd right if he's made of molten metal you know you, you're not he's he's not difficult to miss you're never going to be sat there going where's my general my lot. only half our force remains only half I've lost half the army already oh god
Yeah, I'm just gonna time six speed this until it's over. Just make it end. Kill those wizards. The wizards do finally appear to be dying. Our men have killed a Saracen general. <laughs> a Saracen general, is it? There we go. There's Master Arian dead. We win now, right? Do they seriously have a unit left somewhere? Behold, there we go. No one shall doubt that we are the victors on this day. A thousand men lost. I'm getting the feeling that that might be might be pretty par for the course when playing as the Ashlanders. Our, our, our troops are not exactly what you'd call the, the highest quality. We've got chitin armor, for goodness sake. <laughs> we have, like, the worst armor in the game. It's not technically the worst thing in, in Morrowind, actually. Netch leather is technically worse, but still. There we go, we've got it. There's no point in sacking it. There's like, what, we get 128 gold from it? Forget it, just occupy. All right. It does have nice region descriptions for the different regions on the map, which is fun. It has a little description here for the Grey Lands, which is nice. I do like to see that in, in mods when it's available. Uh, I'm just going to hit the merge button. Annoying Move you out there. I haven't much time. Anyone else with really low Whatever unit size? I'm yeah. not interested. You, you, what you. Yeah, you exactly. go back there. I can tell you been there. Been there. I can't retrain any of them, I don't think. I can retrain them to give them a weapon or armor upgrade, I think, but that's about it. I'll just recruit some more spear militia. Take a unit of... Which ones are the, ra the raiders, these guys? I think they're javelin guys, aren't they? Oh, that's a nice touch to do Gua scare horses like camels do. That's 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 pretty neat. Where are you going? Annoying outlander. Okay, so we've taken this. We can build some fields at least. Yes, my lord. Let's go over here and yes, see if we can have a little word with the red around. Without question. Ah, there they sire. are. Speak of the devils. Your orders, sire. Why do you outlanders think you can bother anyone you please? Okay. Well, we took a settlement. Our projected profits are still dreadful. But we took a settlement. We've practically doubled our income. It's a start. It is a start. What do you want? Still gonna figure out a way of getting you across the in the sea here. Annoying outlanders. Is Red Mountain going to blow up and delete all your progress? Um, oddly enough, it will eventually, yeah. If you play long enough. The Red Year is a scripted event and it does pretty much delete everything on Vardenfell. So if you were playing real long term, like you were sitting, you were sitting here and thinking, right, I want to play a really long campaign, then uh, that is definitely something you'd want to take into account. Ha ha ha. 
<laughs> Relations with Day Great House Dagoth have worsened to reasonable. Hey, look, it's a little Imperial boat. We have garrisons throughout whatever it is. I'm not interested. Still can't hire any boats of my own, though. Where are you going? I guess you're just going to have to Sarah. walk along the coastline until I can Where find you, you some going? boats, my dude. I'll Alexia be praying. We are blessed. Truly blessed. This is an honor. But House Redoran don't like the fact that I'm Blender, meandering yes. across their territory, either. Yes, sire. Without question, sire. I think I missed yes, Margan, sire. didn't I? Yeah, Margan's up there. But it's not actually Redoran territory right now. At least... Oh, I think it might be now. I think they've conquered it, judging by the map here. Yes, my lord. Never mind, we'll just go to Aldrin. Tomorrow's journey planned out, sire. Tomorrow's journey planned out, sire. All right, where are we going now we've taken Voss? Is the question. Like, Telfir is over here. Do, do I want to go and do I want to go and fight David Fear? I think that sounds like a horrific idea, but you never know. I think that might actually be our next step, honestly. We built those roads yet? Yes, we have. I don't know if it did much for our trade income. I will build a mar mar a market. Will actually get us some extra money now, apparently, um, because we have more than one settlement. Finally, however, all it's going to get me is twenty-one gold a turn. <laughs> so <laughs> that is. Pretty arguably not worth spending 2,400 septims on. <laughs> Good God almighty. The farms, on the other hand, they, they do look like they're worth it. It's going to get me 225 plus 64 a turn. I don't know if he has the Daedric Artifacts to loot, but I know that the game does model him... Well, I don't know if it models him in-game as wearing Daedric Armor, but he does have Daedric Armor as an ancillary, which gives him a buttload of hit points. Which is fun. Alright, let's move you out of here. Let's see if I can... Uh, what can I leave here as a garrison? Javelin men? That will be sufficient, apparently. Okay, good. Move over here and... Build a watchtower. Hello, Firewatch. Yeah, this is a good place to have a watchtower. <laughs> Let's move you down this way. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. Notice how the Nerevarine has been demoted. He's no longer leading the stack. Sulmatul is. He's got full stars now. <laughs> Faith in the Nerevarine's leadership seems to have been shaken somewhat by that atrocious siege battle. Three blessings, Sarah. What do you want? Yeah, you could probably do with some. Outlander. Extra spearmen and swordsmen. What are those? Just marksmen, yeah. Yes, I can tell you been there, done that. Where are you going? It was a bit of a Pyrrhic victory, wasn't it? Your orders, sire. Have we moved you guys yet? Mathsera. Negative. Yes, I've been around. I, can ah, tell I was you hoping maybe there was a land bridge here, but nope. Where are you going? Close, Three but blessings. no cigar. Where are you going? What is it, Sarah? Then turn. Who don't have to fight his daughter suit? No, they are listed as um, ancillaries, though, for his on his character sheet thing. They all give various stat buffs. Technically, you can give them to other Telvani characters and move them around the map, I suppose. Because you just click and drag them to a different character in the same stack. If you wanted to. Don't know why, but...
Any minute now. There we go. Cleared fields is done. Getting a teensy weensy bit more money. Just the tiniest bit. We still need to conquer more settlements, really. I'm not interested. And on that note. Hello, Telfear. I've come to knock on your door. Oh, you have, like, no garrison. That makes things easier. On the other hand, they do have Duvethfear himself. Unfortunately, I can't see his retinue, but yeah, he does have all of his daughters in the retinue. And as well as his Daedric armor and whatnot, so. And he does have, yeah, a bunch of mages. Don't know what the other unit is. Annoying outlanders. How many, how many turns can they survive in the event of a siege? Just two turns. Your cursed bloodline ends here. On the other hand, they don't... They don't have walls. I might just sort of resolve this. There we go. We lost eight men. I guarantee you I would have lost more than that if I hadn't already resolved it. <laughs> if we sack the settlement, we will gain zero septims and massacre 24 people. What is the population of this, by the way? Just out of curiosity. 424. Okay. It's pretty low. What about Voss? 951. Bit better. Rubbish, though. All right. Uh, low tax rate. Please, okay, they're going to riot even if I do lower the tax rate. Uh, that's a problem. Let's recruit a merchant. That might help with our income a little bit. Can I build anything else here? No, just the leather tanner. Oh, God damn it! Public order is going to be a problem. It's because of our religion, basically. It's because we're uh, Daedric cults instead of Tribunal Temple. Uh -huh. The Ashlanders suck, guys. This is a terrible faction to play as. Yes. Oh my God. Hi, House Redoran. Would you like some trade rights? And would you like? Uh, I was going to ask for military access, but I don't know if that's available. Alliance? Apparently that would be very generous. Military access? Now it's balanced. If I offer map information? If I offer you payment? Generous. I do not believe. I oh, fucking medieval two begin. diplomacy, man! Absolute no sense whatsoever. I've been spoiled by playing Attila in Rome too. Apparently, um, never mind. <laughs> Can you recruit a boat yet? No. <laughs> Better keep marching then. Let's get to that point where I'm starting to think maybe I should just start disbanding my units here to fix the economy. But we can afford to go a bit, a bit longer than that. Yeah, we've still got 30 grand in the bank. It's not a ton of settlements on this side of the map, though. It's kind of the main problem. If I cheat a little bit here, just to remind us where the settlements are. I mean, you got Molag Mar, Mar all the way down there, Saran. Or we double back this way and go and attack Mar Gan and just say, fuck Redoran. But... Don't know if I want to do that actually. It sounds like a bad idea. I'm 
problem is, presumably the Talvani are going to want that. They're the one that's going to want these back. What and why? And they do have ships to take it back with, so. Not much in the way of armies right now, though, apparently. Although, at the moment, there you go, there's proof that they, the AI can naval invade, at least. Currently, they're attacking Dagon Fell, it looks like. I'm sure once they're done with that, they'll probably be wanting to come over here. In which case, we might be in trouble. Oh, I forgot to repair this. That doesn't help. Is there anything broken here I need to repair? No. I was hoping maybe if I repaired something, it would fix the public order problem, but no. It's just a village with cleared fields and nothing else. Zafir Bell Bay. Well, um, I'm going to move... Well, I can't move my army out. I was going to, but I can't. Don't have enough movement points. I was going to move them out so that when the inevitable rioting happens, my troops aren't damaged, but they're going to be. Rip. How much rioting could they possibly do? There's like 400 people in the visit village and my army is like at least one and a half thousand strong. I mean, <laughs> how much could they possibly accomplish? But the game doesn't work like that, sadly. Oh, hello. Ah, they've decided to attack my two little dudes here. What have they got? Arch militia, spear militia. Do you know what? I'll fucking take you, mate. Maybe I can win this with a bit of cavalry micromanagement. The enemy is gaining the upper hand. See now, this I like. When you when you fight in Morrowind, sometimes you get. The Morrowind biome, which gives you mushroom forests. Like this, which is pretty cool. Oh, there we go. We got our Ashlander's general bodyguard. Who all sound suspiciously German! And there they are. They got some spearmen, they got archers. That's it. Okay, right, well. You go this way. You go this way. Dealing with the spearmen is going to be annoying, but the archers aren't a problem. I hope. And again, these guars are really quite slow. Oh, we're already being shot at and already being... Yeah, already dying. Got, like, no proper armor, so the archers are just mowing us down. Although, Gua, charge, here we go. Nice. We commit his desert dwelling soul to hell. And now the spearmen are after us. Withdraw. Ugh, micromanaging cavalry in medieval two is hard. Medieval 2 has this whole thing about with all the units being incredibly unresponsive to your commands, which some t in some ways I like, in some ways I don't. Because in some ways it's quite realistic that you don't have such pinpoint responsiveness from your units. On the other hand, it does make it very difficult to get away with cavalry shenanigans. 
You guys are also not massacring these archers nearly as successfully as I thought you would. They are archers and you are cavalry. You should be... They should be r routing by now, frankly. And then there's this. There's the whole medieval 2 thing of units having difficulties pathfinding and stuff. The archers are winning. Victory seems certain. Wow, okay. I think we're fucked. I should have auto-resolved. That way we'd actually survive. As it stands, though, the withdraw option is greyed out, so it means we're all going to die. Unless I can we must change tactics. somehow try and get my guys to rout. Without the general characters dying. Though at this point it seems like a bit of a lost cause. Because if they don't kill me here, they're just going to kill me somewhere else later. <laughs> These Guara being very uncooperative. I tell them to turn around and charge and they just kind of stand there grazing. These were actually decent cavalry, like, um, like Imperial Legion cavalry or something. We'd probably be, be alright, but, uh, unfortunately, no. It's a bunch of Ashlanders on Gwars. <laughs> Whose abilities I grossly overestimated. Remains. Fuck it, charge the spearmen head on. What could go wrong? Just gonna use a bit of time compression here. Enemy has lost half his army. Maybe we aren't sucking quite as much as I thought. I still don't think we're going to win, but then again, if we can get them all to rout. We are being defeated. We must change tactics. Let's there we go. The Brilliant. <laughs> Believe that's what the kids call clutch. Oh my god. Very tired Guard. Do not move very fast, do they? It's like I'm playing in slow-mo. <laughs> oh dear. You're actually not going to be able to catch them up. I think these infantry are actually outrunning you. Come on. Yeah, no, they're going to get away. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Yeah, you'd be better off dismounting and just running after them, wouldn't you? Oh, well. No we, we, we won. We done did it. Did we get any casualties here? We did actually get quite a lot of casualties healed, which is nice. Hey, General Store, thank you very much for the resub. Greetings, Outlander. Yes. I don't wish to be seen with you. I know you can, I know you can hear me. Um, execute? Execute. Yo, Enwa. Yo, 
I think I'm going to switch campaigns. I think I'm going to switch over to my Empire one. This has been, this has had some comedy value, this Ashlander campaign, but um, I'm not really digging it. I'm not really digging the Ashlanders as a faction. I think they need some work. They don't seem very good. Not to mention they have definite issues. A new family member, dude. Three blessings. Why not? Telfir is rioting. Alexia be praised, Sarah. Oh, he's he's there. Okay. Yeah, and Telfir's public order seems to be completely unfixable as well, which doesn't help. Where are you going? So a low tax rate is pretty much all I can do. Even with a full garrison it's going to it's going to revolt, revolt apparently, so Eh Alright. Well, RIP this campaign. It was not very good. I'll save it just in case, but save succeeded i'm gonna quit back to i'm gonna go completely quit out of the game just in case you know script shenanigans happen otherwise so welcome back to the desktop and we'll load up my fourth era empire campaign which i've been playing which is rather more entertaining. I've been finding it anyway. Load campaign game. Fourth Era Empire. Yeah, they're, they're very slow, the Guar Cavalry, aren't they? And they're very squishy. They're just not very good. All right, so this is the fourth era campaign. So this is, you know, don't know I don't know exactly what the start date is, but it is your knee deep in the Stormcloak, you know, Skyrim Civil War stuff. Um, I've got General Tullius. Over here, I believe I was marching him in this direction to go and fight Istar Cairnbreaker over here and maybe take Fort Dunstad. We've got a garrison at Fort Greymoor. Lots of loyalist Nords marching about from Har Harfingar, the Harfingar faction. Um, you got Whiterun over yonder, Riverwood. We've got Helgen as well. Iristers are just down the way. I don't really have enough troops here to go on the offensive just yet. I don't think I can. I can. Every 13 turns, recruit a unit of Light Legionnaire Swordsmen, but uh, that's not very good. Uh, elsewhere, I've got Maro here, who's leading a force to attack this dungeon fort, which is full of Daedric cultists, so scamps and Dramora mages, looks like. And some Zivali, they're going to be a problem. I believe I currently have a faction mission to do that. Yes, I have a Mages Guild quest to uh, to clear out Fort Horan right now. And the reward is going to be ability to recruit guild units, magic potions, you'll receive septums as well, so this is definitely worth doing. I think I only have like two more two a few more turns to do this with you yeah, as well. Five turns, so that might be a difficult fight though. I mean in his army right now we've got Legion Bowmen, Swordsmen, Imperial Watch Spearmen, a couple of units of Imperial Scouts, aka Mounted Town Guards. And then Mario himself, who's got Penitus Oculatus Bodyguards. That's actually, they're really good. They are really, really good. They're almost as good as the Blades. Which, actually, that, that'll probably win the battle right there, actually. The fact that he's got the Penitus Oculatus with him. 
Sweet. All right. Uh, let's see. We got Bruma over there. Oh, yeah, there it is. The last dragonborn who is inexplicably called Adrian for some reason in this mod. I don't know why, but apparently the last dragonborn is called Adrian. Fuck knows why. Um, I couldn't remember the name earlier, but there it is. Uh, he's nowhere near as good as the Nerevrine, is he? Only three stars of command. How rubbish. At least he's loyal, I guess. Anyway, I think I think he literally just spawned. He's there. He's the, the main thing with it with with old Adrian here though is the fact that he has a bodyguard of blades who are like some of the best units in the game. Defense forty, attack thirty five. Three hit points each. These these guys are ludicrously strong. So, what should we do with Adrian? I am, I believe, now currently at war with the Aldmeri Dominion. They attacked me in the previous end turn. I'll give you the general state of affairs, I think, in a second. But um, Captain Salmo here. I'd kill you where you stand if I wasn't bound by my oath as an officer of the old Mary Dominion. Yeah, this this douchebag down here, he attacked one of my characters that was running around, but this guy here, Glor Glorious Matthias here. Where to put them is the key. I had him running around building watchtowers to increase my line of sight over this freaking huge province that is Cyrodiil. Um and uh, this motherfucker marched over the border and attacked him, so I'm now officially at war with the Old Mary Dominion. Which is not great, because I'm honestly not ready for it, but never mind. Gonna have to fight the Stormcloaks and the High Elves at the same time. I've got Fort Such over here, which is garrisoned with a huge army right now, because for some reason, Fort Such starts the game with a massive, massive amount of unrest, and I have no idea why. Absolutely no idea why. What year is this? It's it's whatever year Skyrim is saying, I think. Maybe a bit afterwards. I don't remember. I think it might be set during or slightly after the Skyrim main quest. I'm not sure. I believe it might be... I don't remember. I don't remember because there's this campaign and there's the fourth era campaign. And I think they have slightly different start dates. This one is the Stormcloak Rebellion campaign I'm doing right now, so... Because I know that scripted dragon attacks are a thing in at least one of these campaigns. We have a whole religion problem as well, actually. It's not a major problem, but it is, it is there. In that we have the Eight Divines as a religion in addition to the Nine Divines. And um, the Eight Divines religion is being spread by a bunch of random Thalmor priests that march around our territory. I can't see any right now, but there was one over here previously. So you have the whole eight divines, nine divines problem to deal with as the Empire. There he is. There's a priest. At least I've got a priest of my own here. This I fear the gods will remember. I got the Imperial Seed, I got my dungeon quest dude there. I've got Emperor Titus Mead. The second. He's got the Storm Crown, the Ruby Throne, and a biographer. There's all of his traits. Uh, we're not able to recruit a lot of particularly good units at the moment. In 17 turns, we'll be able to get some Arcane University Mages, which are very good. In 4 turns, we can get some more Imperial Battle Mages, which are okay. Um, aside from that, we're pretty much stuck with Town Guard Swordsmen. Right at the bottom end of the tech tree at the moment. In some campaigns, you start off with much more developed towns and stuff, and you can recruit much higher up the tech tree. But this is one of those campaigns where you start off right at the bottom and have to grow up basically. Is it a month of turn or a month of season? I'm not actually sure. I think it might be four turns per year, but it, I don't remember. It might be a bit more than that. It could be 12 turns per year. I'm not totally sure. There's old Cropsford. There's Breville. There's Raymond Terentius. He's currently... 
He's one of the counts. I'm not sure if I can't remember which. I think he might be the count of Breville. In these grave times, each legionnaire must and there's Auden Scarrow, who's the count of Leowin and who looks weirdly Nordic. I'm not sure what's going on there. He's a very Nordic looking count of Leowin. Yeah, yeah, he's Count Leowin. He's got a he's got a retinue thing and everything. Uh, hello, that's an army from Palatine. If you are planning violence against me or mine, you'll regret it. Elsewhere is an arid land of deserts and rocky canyons where the sun shines warmly, always. I love the I love the campaign map voices for the dudes when you click on them. If you are planning violence against me or mine, but they uh, I really wish they'd add it for the battle map as well, because like I said, it's. <laughs> It's hilarious, but it gets old real fast when uh, when your troops on the battle map have vanilla voices. Soldiers win wars, but where to put them is the key. Uh, over here at Skingrad, I've got Caster Gerald, Penis Hasseldor, and a bunch of troops. I got a very one, some of my very very short supply of heavy Legion cohort warriors right here. These guys are pretty darn good as basic infantry go. But we have very little of them, and I don't think I can recruit any new ones right now. Mostly I've been trying to get my economy going, but it's taking a bit. I don't think there's much left for me to do on this turn. I think all I, all I can do right now is press end turn. I think I've done everything. I've got one little fleet here. I did have a larger navy, but I disbanded it, because honestly... I wasn't expecting to use it for anything. Um, mission is to serve the Emperor. Uphold the law. Let's get you back to Breville, shall we? The Legion has stepped in to keep order. Uh, I could talk a lot of fog of war and you can have a look around the map actually if you want. If you want to have a look at Morrowind post red year, it's a friggin' mess. As you can see. There's a big old crater where Vivek used to be. House Dreads have moved all the way up here into what was Telvanni territory. The Telvanni have Necrum. Uh, the Inderil pretty much just have a Thrensis and that's it. Red Ran are doing alright for themselves though. They've got Raven Rock. They've got all of this down here. Looks like they even have what's left of Balmora. Ruins of Balmora, yeah. And House Lali would just don't exist anymore. They're dead in this campaign. They are gone. They're not a playable faction. And the Ashlanders have these down here, funnily enough. Ashlanders seem to have done quite well for themselves, actually, out of the whole Red Year thing, weirdly enough. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, they control a bit more territory this time around. So yeah, map's a bit more filled out as well. As you can see, the Argonians control a lot more territory in this campaign. Which is neat. We as the Empire have a lot less though, obviously, like Lilmoth, for example. Uh, yeah, we don't have that anymore. Most of our like uh, overseas territories, if you like, are, are gone. I believe we have a castle up here in High Rock, yeah. Port done there. Um, and we have, you know, the Isle of Balfiera and Dereni Tower. And that's kind of it, I think, pretty much. That's that's more or less it. Is Claudius playing? No! No, no, the last Dragonborn is called Adrian in this mod. For some reason. Adrian. I don't, I don't know why. I don't is there some kind of inside joke on the part of the mod makers? I don't get it. I don't know why he's called Adrian. No, you can't rename characters. I mean, I could if I went into the the mod's files and actually found him in the damn export description unit text file. I could go and find him in there and rename him, but uh, you can't rename them in-game, no.
You say everyone like everyone here has the remotest goddamn clue what the hell you're talking about, Django. Alright, uh, I think we're just going to whack the end turn button. There's not much else for us to do right now. Let me just double check there isn't anything important I forgot to do in Skyrim. Nope, Tullius is marching north. Fort Greymore is guarded by Quentin Sipius right now. Commander of Fort Greymore. And our guys in Helgen are just chilling. I am making positive monies. Right, cool. End turn. How long have the guys at well chill before things warm up? Interesting question. As I said, scripted dragon attacks do feature in the campaign, I think. So... Who knows? What's the era? Well, I mean, I feel like since we have a last dragonborn called Adrian, should that not have answered your question? I was I was tempted by the idea of doing a YouTube series of this mod, specifically playing as the Empire in the main Septim campaign, where you start off. Um, I forget what the date is, but it's around the start of Morrowind. You know, with the Nerevarin wandering about and Dagoth uh, rampaging around. Because if you start with that campaign, you get to do... You have the events of Morrowind, and then you have the Oblivion Crisis, and then you have the Red Year, and you have Titus Mead, and you have the whole gamut of scripted events. Um, Decentius Olin. Sure. Um, but um, the more I played the mod, the more I discovered that uh, I'm not totally convinced this mod is quite ready for prime time just yet <laughs> as we've seen it has a few issues just one or two including some obnoxiously loud campaign map music what the fuck is this good grief why Alright. I wish I had some more intel on exactly what the hell he's got there. I can't recruit a spy either. You need to... You need to, like, re recruiting spies in this mod is for some reason needlessly complicated. You have to get a thieves guild in order to recruit spies. And in order to get a thieves guild, you have to basically earn it like a... like a... a knightly order in vanilla. As in, you'll get a message saying the thieves guild wishes to establish a guild house in your settlement and in order to satisfy those hidden requirements you have to do a bunch of weird stuff like build mercantile buildings and uh leave a city with mercantile buildings in it ungoverned so with no governor in it which is probably actually why i don't have the count of breville in breville right now now i think about it Imperial business. Be on your way. because i've been trying to get establish a thieves guild in breville um brothel huh I guess that's probably thieves guildy isn't it oh a market that'll do um and only once you've established a thieves guild can you then recruit spies I don't I don't really know why it's that way but it, it just Your is Majesty. I guess I've got a diplomat I can use as a, a very very dodgy impromptu spy what do they got Mary. Alt Mary heavy archers 
Fatland Wood Light Archers, Altmary Heavy Pikemen, Dominion Swords, uh, Spearmen even. Well, the only ones I got stats for are the Heavy Swordsmen, and they have pretty chunky stats. Defense 20, attack 14, that's pretty good. That's, uh... That's definitely better than my my heavy legion cohorts. Um, Our mission is to serve the emperor. Not super happy about that. I gotta be honest. The legion has stepped in order. It doesn't look like they have any cavalry. If I had to guess, they might have some bodyguard cavalry, perhaps. That we have forgotten them. This, I fear the gods will remember. Uh, I build any other economic buildings. There's lots of cool buildings available. As you can see, you can build like way shrines, for example, which give you religious conversion. A night chapter, because uh, you can uh, you can build you can get various knightly orders in this. So you can get the Knights of the Nine, for example, as a recruitable thing. They're pretty decent too, as well, if I recall. Turns until surrender. Do you know the mission has four turns left on it? I'm willing to wait that out and let them sally forth and attack me rather than having to go in there and get them. Ooh, cleared fields. That's a good idea. There we go. Right, meanwhile, in Skyrim... These grave oh, they've retreated back into the Fort Dunstad, you gits. I wanted an open field battle with you bastards. Goddamn Stormcloaks. What if I just... If I head over here and I just kind of stand around invitingly, maybe tempt the AI into attacking me. How are, does, does, I can't remember, does this mod have a supply system? I don't think it does. It's not, it doesn't look like it does. Okay, so we can probably just stand there indefinitely if we have to. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the army running out of supplies. This isn't Broken Crescent or Europa Barbarorum. Um... And we come back here to this little problem, don't we? Well, one thing we've got is characters with generals' bodyguards, and the imperial general bod generals' bodyguards are really good cavalry, so we can kind of exploit that a bit. Can I move you out of Fort Dirich and have the place still, yeah, not revolt? There we go. That's three characters we've got there, then. Servatius Goldvine. Should be gold wine, shouldn't it, really? If he's the Count of Kvatch. Light Legionnaire Spearman. I guess I can send you this way, at least. I'd like to free up the Fort Such garrison, but as you can see, Fort Such has a has an unrest problem, and I don't know why. But it does. Can I at least pull out the heavy cohorts without the place losing its mind? Yeah, it looks like I can. About the archers. Okay, cool. We can get. We can take the good units. All right. What about Anvil? You just got a bunch of town guards. Looks like. Okay. And we got Adrian. If we can get Adrian down here, we'll be grand because Adrian's got. A has got a bodyguard of 10 blades and they are they ridiculously powerful so they will kill lots and lots of elves um okay you're you're there this fort port port they're done here is just i would disband these Stop. units but they're currently free upkeep so there's there's no point in disbanding them they're just free right now so port done and Upvale here on the Isle of Balfira. Basically, they're just here generating me a little bit of income. I can't really do anything with these settlements other than that. Hello. Worshippers of Malakath. 
Oh, right, we're, we're next door to the orcs. That makes sense. Just a number 81, thank you very much for the 14 months of subbage. Welcome back. I think there's not much we can do with crops for right now, is there? Not until the settlement levels up. We've got Fort Cup Tour down here. I do like these. These are there are quite a few medieval two mods and Rome Total War mods for that matter actually feature the these little region description buildings in each province. And I, I always just I really like that. I really like that. I remember Third Age, I think, has this. Europa Barber Rome 2 has it. I just I like being able to right click there and then read about the settlement. It helps me immerse me in the game a bit more, you know? Uh we currently, yeah, we're bordering with the Ashlanders over here. I built a watchtower to keep an eye on them, but I'm not expecting a lot of trouble from them, if I'm honest. Who's this? A Pelotine Lunar Champion. Elsewhere is an arid land of What's that when it's at home? I guess you look like a priest to me. Yeah, you have piety. You spreading heathen religion down here? I don't need that right now. The Jarkaje, yeah you are. You bugger. I don't... No, thank you. Could raise my taxes here a bit, I suppose. Rimmon's over there. I believe I got a thing about Rimmon. Rimmon. It's um, I don't. There's no. It seems to be no way to reaccess the information. But I got an event pop up for Rimmon about there being an Akaveri swordsman there. That the legendary Akaveri swordsman living in Rimmon. Rimmon, that uh, if we if we take the town and kick out the Renrija Kreen that are running the place, we can recruit him, I believe. But uh, right now, I have bigger problems than just trying to attack a random, you know, minor faction settlement at the moment. I guess I could take these light legionnaires, couldn't I? You guys aren't doing much here, are you, at Fort Homestead? That might take all of you. Better yet, I'll take all of you and leave a bunch of archers in Fort Homestead. It's, the place is not going to revolt. It has no governance, but it isn't going to revolt at least. Although, actually... Look, I accidentally took everybody there and I didn't want to. No, back in, back in you go. There we go. We need you over here. The waiting, the insufferable waiting. Let's have a look at diplomacy. Are we enemies with anyone else or enemies with Hold of East March, Council of Thalmor, and the Undead? But that's it for the moment. Our allies are Evermore, Harfingar, Daggerfall, Wayrest, and Sharnhelm. It's not a lot. The Empire's seen better days. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, that's going to have to do for this turn, I think. Bet you anything that he's going to attack my random general who's marching by there. Hopefully he'll, I can hit retreat and he'll go back into Skingrad. I'll get a bit of free movement out of the bargain. Whenever it's ready. Oh, I'm, I'll be right back, everybody. Actually, I think I can hear the cat at the door. He wants to come in, so I'll be right back. And yes, yeah, just, just as I suspected. All right, hold on, folks. BRB.
All right, folks, we have a putty set. Hello, Colin. You want to sit on the lap? You do, don't you? Had his dinner. Wants to snooze on my lap. Right, we're not going to fight this battle, obviously. What on earth is... Oh, the map. I've been dumped somewhere in the middle of the... Middle of nowhere, right. However, we can use this opportunity to get a better look at their army. Okay. Yeah, they just have archers, 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 archers. Pikemen, archers, spearmen, swordsmen. With enough cavalry, we could absolutely do a number on that, I think. Withdraw. Are you moron? Why didn't you go to Skingrad? Well, you're going to die now. Now, if I auto-resolve, he won't actually be stack-wiped. He'll just retreat into Skingrad, thankfully. That's a thing to remember with Medieval 2. If you fight the battle manually, you're doomed. If you auto-resolve, your family member will in all likelihood survive. All right, right. The, the the guys in the dungeon here are actually sallying forth. So this is a, a gang of Zivili, 119 of them, and a bunch of scamps and mages. And if we can win this, we'll get a nice chunky reward from the Mages Guild. This should be interesting. I wonder what the battle map's going to look like. Probably just another generic vanilla settlement. That's what I'm expecting, but maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Because this mod does do custom settlements. I have seen them, I promise you. It's a shame that Medieval 2 you can't do the thing that you could do in Rome Total War, where you could view the settlement at any time from the campaign screen and see the little civilians walking around. Okay, we've got... Okay, we've got a <laughs> we've got a Middle Earth dwarf thing nicked from the Third Age mod. All right, fine. I guess that works. We can just pretend it's Dwemer, right? And it's got a weird ass building outside it. Okay, so exactly where is the enemy? Oh, they're in here. Oh, I see what you mean about the camera spot. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. All the siege equipment but the ram is used. Yeah, no, it's exactly like the dwarf settlements in in uh, Divide and Conquer, which is this is nicked from. But there's all the little scamps. And the Daedric, ma uh, the Dramora mages. And the Zivili. These guys are very, very good. I used them in my Merin's Dagon campaign. I'm a little bit scared of them, as a matter of fact. But it's going to take them an age to get here, apparently. And luckily, we aren't fighting them inside because they're sallying forth, so. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, right. Uh, no reason to fight over there, really, in range of the towers. So let's fall back down this way. Actually, I, what I really need is to give some room for my cavalry to manoeuvre, so... I see no reason not to, honestly, just... Is there somewhere else I can go that's a bit... better? Maybe here? No. Uh, this is Medieval 2 cavalry we're talking about here, so they really do need, like, a whole football pitch worth of room so that they can gallop properly. Let's get you down here. Oh, we've got a Legion Cohort Phalanx, have we? Sweet. Get you down here and all. Archers. Right, my Penitus Oculatus boys, they need to be there too. And the cavalry as well. In fact, everybody needs to run. You can rest once you get there. You guys go out of pike formation and run. Alright, this character has Penitus Oculatus bodyguards instead of regular bodyguard cavalry. And these guys are very, very good. 
Not as good as Blades, but still pretty good. Oh boy, cavalry coming through. Pause here and get the thing up. They don't have an image here, sadly, but uh, they do have two hit points each. 29 defense and 31 attack, so... I'm hoping these guys can cut through a load of those Zivoli. I'm basically just going to get my cavalry to just try and massacre all the scamps and mages. Uh, they kind of are, kind of aren't. As you see, if you look at these Imperial Watch Spearmen, they're meant to be analogous to the the kinds of Imperial legionaries you see in Morrowind. The, 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 the description for them basically explains that they're like the cheaper legionaries that they deploy out in the provinces. Uh, and then as, as you can see they're not they're not directly ripped from from Morrowind. They're kind of a mix of the ones from Skyrim and the ones from Morrowind. Some of them do look a bit more obvious if I can find any in this army but I'm not sure. You got the town guards. They look pretty similar to the ones from Oblivion. Although they have the faces from Morrowind, which is weird. But there it is. So they've they've reused some of the textures because there's no way you can recreate those those original faces from scratch. <laughs> but clearly, a lot of work has been done to sort of downscale them so they can work on, you know, this kind of level in Medieval Two, where you've got hundreds and hundreds of guys running around at once. So. While it was kind of ripped from the games, it's sort of also... I think clearly a lot of work has gone into actually making them compatible in this context. Daedra? They, wait, they're not going back in, are they? Oh shit, they're going back in. That wasn't part of the plan. Hey douchebags! Get out of here! switch on time compression and wait for them to figure out what they're doing it'll give my guys a chance to rest anyway after jogging all of this way here lined up it looks like I have battle timers turned off so I can't just wait them out unfortunately they still got more coming where are the Zivoli at oh god the camera on this map is really fucking weird okay the Zivoli are just hanging out in there am I allowed to exit the battle no I'll lose if I exit this seems very unfair It's like they're trying to move but can't. Oh god. Medieval 2 pathfinding is bad enough on a good day. You add a weird custom map like this to the mix and it's like, oh god. Well on the brighter side, their main infantry unit is otherwise occupied so I'm going to send in the cavalry to just try and massacre these scamps and mages. These aren't great cavalry, these are just Imperial Scouts, a.k.a. conscripted town guards, but hopefully they can still kill a bunch of scamps and mages with a few charges. Although, God knows how the pathfinding is going to work here with these towers and whatnot. 
I expect all sorts of bullshit shenanigans. In an ideal world, we'll charge directly at them and kill a whole bunch of them. But if this is Medieval 2, which probably means that they'll get to here and then inexplicably start walking and going off in weird directions. You ready, boys? Have Adam. Oh, they're actually charging, my god. And that's a bunch of scams going flying. <laughs> I'm a little surprised that the enemy units weren't shooting us because these are ranged units, these the scamps and the, the mages. We continue like this, we will smash the enemy. They chuck little, fairly puny fireballs, but they do chuck fireballs. But it seems like they're going to ha quite happy to let me just charge and recharge and recharge them at the moment. They're even letting this guy walk away. Oh, man. Medieval 2 AI. It's a, th it's a spectacle, all right. very much in our favor if we remain true and steadfast victory will be ours all right we'll just keep doing this till victory i guess splat Is very much in Merge our death kill. If we remain true and steadfast, we're going through the doors. Right, I think we've killed virtually all of them now. After those scamps, get them. Oh my god, camera. St. George, save us. The enemy have the walls. Does that mean we're locked in? That's hilarious. Yeah, I think we're locked in. <laughs> Somebody go pick up the ram. Just, just click on the deck. Thank you. Can we at least go back out? Can we cap? We should be able to capture the gate, surely, if we just run up next to it. Surely the gate is ours. Thank you. Right, forget the ram. We don't need it. Right, now we're going to go kill those Zivoli, and that's going to be the hard part. I don't think I can just cavalry charge them to death. Oh my god, the camera on this map! <laughs> it's so bad! Yeah, these stuck Zivoli over here need to be killed, so... Oh my god. I'm trying to give this mod the best chance I can. I'm really desperately trying to give it a good, sh fair shake of the stick. But fucking hell, it makes it difficult, doesn't it? All right, we're going to need Mr. Penitus Oculatus guy, aren't we? We're going to need you, and I'm thinking the swordsman and the phalanx at the very least up at the front. Yeah, you guys, you're going in first. And 
we'll bring in the archers and we'll pelt them with arrows from a distance for as long as we can get away with. In you go, boys. Right, we'll just sit here and wait for them to get here, shall we? <laughs> oh, dear. Where in Tamri are we right now? We are in northeastern Cyrodiil somewhere. Probably a uh, hundred miles or so east of uh, Bruma right now. If I recall on the map campaign map. In what I am going to charitably call a, a, a Dwemer ruin. A Dwemer ruin that looks suspiciously like a dwarf one from uh, Third Age Total War, but we're going to just call it a Dwemer ruin. It's just full of Daedra that we're here to kill on behalf of the Mages Guild. No, no, we're, go we're going with Dwemer because it all looks really dwarfy. I mean, you're not you're not going to be fooling anyone if you want to sit here and claim that this is Aeliad. It has gold doors, you know, at the front, which, is, you know, it's kind of like the, the, the Dwemer ones in Skyrim, right? You know, that's what I'm thinking. Skyrim-esque Dwemer ruin here. We are pretty close to Skyrim right now, after all, so I guess it makes sense. A really weird-ass kind of sense, but sense it is. I, I, we shouldn't be too harsh on the mod anyway. You know, this is this is putting the Elder Scrolls in Medieval Two Total War is is a is a. A slightly deranged ambitious project you know it's a bit unhinged to really actually seriously try and make that work and yet they've made a good stab at it here so you know I've, I've had I've had a good few hours of fun with this like I said I played a, I played a Daedra campaign which was good fun I've been playing this one I've been having a laugh with, and I've got a red around one going on the Vardenfell Provincial map, which is good fun too. You know, there's good, solid, total war fun to be had with this mod. It's just don't go into it expecting it to be polished on the same level as a lot of the other best, uh, the other really good total war mods out there these days. All right, Penitus Oculatus versus Zivoli. Let's uh, let's do this, I guess. I don't think my archer's going to have the range to hit them from here, but I'll give it a try. See if you guys can get up there and hit them. I don't know what kind of range you've got. You should be able to hit them from here, but you're insisting on moving forwards. Okay, there we go. Alright, hold up there. Hold up. Let the archers do their thing. I don't know why they're using flame arrows. We don't need that. Colin, buddy, I need the uh, cable back, please. Thank you. <laughs> you got the headset cable all tangled up in his paws. Okay, they're spreading out into loose formation, and but not 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 doing a lot else. Loving the three random scamps that survived earlier, by the way, just hanging out. Now they're retreating. Okay. Poor AI just does not, hasn't, doesn't even have the foggiest clue what to do with itself right now. I think they're attacking now, possibly. I don't know. Are we actually killing any of these guys? Kind of. It doesn't look like. Oh no, we've killed a few of them. All right. All right. Archers, you go ahead and stop right now. 
Just say, camera, please behave. Okay, looks like they're withdrawing. The battle is very much in our favor. Penis Arculatus have killed a few of them. And steadfast, victory will be ours. Nice. We're making a good go of it. Hello, Luke. Imagine 2,000 Wes Johnson. Help murder shouts. Well, if you're playing as if you're playing as Daggerfall, maybe they all shout halt. Thousands of halt, halt, halts. I haven't, I haven't played as Daggerfall though, so I wouldn't know. I mean, I, maybe I should. But, I don't know. I kind of avoided, like, factions like Daggerfall or the the Red Guards because I just kind of thought, that's, that's so close to vanilla medieval too. What is even the point? It's a bunch of knights on horses. Laying siege to regular old medieval two castles. I mean, why bother? Why even bother? Oh, hello. The scamps are actually throwing a few fireballs. Good for them. Go on, Maro. You little psychopath. Go and kill some Zivoli for us. Actually, you know what? Kill that scamp. <laughs> scamp has just made a very poor life choice. There we go. I'm curious to see how many of these, these Penitus Arculatus boys can get through, actually. Because Zivoli are no joke. I used them in my Daedra campaign, and they were awesome. These guys chewed through loads of legionaries. But uh, these guys have some pretty ridiculous stats, so I'm sort of curious. Yeah, they're doing all right, aren't they? Oh, there's the enemy general. Looks like he's... He's not a Daedra at all, is he? He's just like a Daedric cultist, dude. He's got necromancer robes on. <laughs> Alright, go get stuck in. Are you the pikeman? Yeah, you are. arguably enough room here to get a bit of a cavalry charge off so I might give that a go it's only if the pathfinding behaves itself though and that's a big if how are you guys doing you have killed quite a few zivoli there's Maro hacking away at the enemy cultist leader dude enemy summoner also getting himself whacked in the face by a civilized massive Daedric sword. He might be he might die pretty soon, which is probably I might want to pull him back, honestly. He should have he should be tough as old boots, because these guys have all got extra hit points. And ridiculous defense, but on the other hand, we don't want to risk him too much if we can help it, because once he's gone, we've we've lost this whole unit, dead. this whole very valuable unit. The Lord, our men are in the Lord. We've lost control of the fort. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not digging the the uh, the third age total war dwarven ruins myself either I think it's pretty much just kind of placeholder stuff a lot of this mod is placeholder stuff let's see if we can get this cavalry to charge men are in command of the fort Oh, they are actually going to do an honest-to-goodness charge. Sweet. The enemy are 
badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Nice. Even Zivoli are not immune to a cavalry charge in the rear. It's nice to see, although these guys are having some pathfinding issues. Yeah, there's some definite weirdness going on in this corner. They seem to have formed a wedge formation. Um, oh, wait, that's because I put them in wedge formation by accident. All right, never mind. I take it back. And the pikemen are doing all right. You guys getting your shit together over here, yeah? Slowly. As I said, you know, a lot of it's placeholder. The the custom stuff they have done is superb. The um, the custom model they've got for the Imperial City and the siege battles is excellent. You can put troops up on the walls and everything. They've got all the districts modelled. It's really, really good. And they have Velothi style settlements in Morrowind as well for like Red Around Towns, for example. Where they look kind of they've got the Alderune style buildings. I think what this is supposed to be is either it's a placeholder for a Daedric Ruin, and that's kind of what it looks like on the campaign map, actually. It looks like a Daedric Ruin on the campaign map, or it's um, a placeholder for some Dwemer ruins, since we are using, like, you know, a dwarf ruin right now as the placeholder. All of the dungeons use this. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's a placeholder then. There's one left. Poke him to death, boys. Poke him with your stabby sticks. All of Colin, I need you to. Thank you. My here cat today. keeps messing with the wires for my headset. I apologise for any weird feedback on the mic. There we go. We only lost 76 men. I'm happy with that. And we've completed our quest. What's Christendom? Oh, it's, uh, it's a little, um... It's a little uh, backwater town in the middle of High Rock. Not sure why. Uh, not sure why the advisor seems so obsessed with it. Maybe he's from there. I'll make sure the Emperor himself hears of Brian presented to betray Prince Ebel Tur Tertia Laric. Oh, sure, whatever. Mission success. Archmage is impressed with you. Apart from the rewards, you're allowed to keep all the artifacts you found. Did we find any artifacts? Maybe we did. Um, cool. Guild units available for a turn. Magic potions next turn. Been awarded with five grand. I won't say no to that. And the Thalmor at war with Greyhouse Talvani. Why? Why and also how? But okay. Come on, Adrian. Need you down here, mate. You and your blades. Come on. Alright. You guys. I'll get you down here as well. So, did you get anything cool, dude? Let's have a look. Skull Crusher and the Mask of Clavicus Vile. Holy shit. Fair enough. Plus three to speed, plus three to chivalry on the battlefield. Uh. And the Mask of is Vile, plus three to popularity. Well, well, well. That's not bad, is it? Oh, what's up, cat? You just mewed at me. 
You wanna you wanna get off my lap? Yeah, I think you probably should, dude. You didn't look very comfortable. You settle down there. I have a I have a desk drawer that's opened up for him and the blanket sort of done across it. I say a blanket, it's actually a folded up rug for him to sleep on, which he does sometimes, but apparently not right now. Not interested. Where is where where are you going, dude? His sound is scratching pad. Alright, fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> right. Well done, Morrow. Well done. Fine work, sir. Oh, you'll love this. Farwell is the Count of Shaden Hall. Check it out. Does he have a special bodyguard unit? I've been wondering about that, actually. No, I was wondering if he might have the Knights of the Thorn as his bodyguards or something. There's a bunch of brigands over here we could attack. I suppose. I'm not sure I like the odds, though, honestly. Our Farwell doesn't have much of an army here, really. But then I suppose neither do they. So can we recruit some Mages Guild stuff? Guild Conjurers. Two turns. Turns till next available unit one. Alright, that's cool. We can recruit some Guild Conjurers next turn. Fadus, you need to go over there, M M Milado. Where have the Falmor gone? They were here. I bet they're hiding in a in some woods somewhere, aren't they? For the Emperor, the Legion has stepped in to keep order. Our mission is to serve the Emperor. Yeah, move you that way, sire. If I can hunt yes, around for him with my Your diplomat. Order, Not really. This is what spies Without are for, but I can't recruit sire. any spies because I don't have a thieves' guild. Question, sire. Very He's annoying mechanic. Sire. Each legionnaire must be his better self at all times for the glory of the empire. We've still been in that market, all right. I noticed the Stormcloaks didn't decide to attack us, which is very annoying. I wasn't able to tempt them out of their fort. <laughs> Build a brothel in Imperial City going to install a sex mod for the Imperial City. <laughs> oh dear. I need economic buildings. That's what I need. Rotation field. Is that the best I can do? There's a shipwright, but I don't know if that's going to get as much. So look. Oh, actually, it'll get us a bit. Another grand or so a turn. What about the fields? Not as much. So I think a shipwright's what we want. Assuming there isn't anything better. Fairground. That would also get us a lot. Which is cheaper? Uh, okay, the shipwright's cheaper, but it will take longer. It's only slightly cheaper as well, so... Uh, let's build the fairground. Alright, oh, new spats. Okay, sword bearer. Tower. Oh, that's the star sign, right? Yeah. He's, got, he's born under the sign of the tower. Which gives him some unique uh, stat buffs, which is nice. You get that for characters in this mod. They uh, sometimes have a star sign they're born under, which is a neat touch. Decentius Olin, commander of the Imperial Legion. I feel like I should make someone else commander of the Imperial Legion. Someone with a bit more talent. For the Emperor. Adrian's kind of rubbish. Fadus is pretty good. We've got Caster Gerald, Prince Ebel, Panis Hasseldor. Prince Ebel would be a good commander of the Legion. He's, I mean, he's already got a bucket load of stars, although that is because presumably he's also like, you know, he's commander of Fort Brendel and also High Chancellor. Which helps. But yeah, if I made him Imperial Legion Commander on top of that, it wouldn't hurt, I guess. They've got Titus Mead himself as well. Who... Does Titus Mead have Penetus Oculatus bodyguards? Out of curiosity. Yes, he does. So, arguably... 
soldiers win wars. Although the thing is, if he's in the Imperial City, he makes us like an extra grand a turn, so <laughs> uh he might be better off left there, actually. However, you know what? I think I'll take Decentius Olin and the these battle mages and take them down here towards Skingrad. I'm gonna make someone else Imperial Legion Commander. I think. I think I'm gonna make Prince Ebel the Legion Commander. What is it? Uh Uh, yeah, if you can't find Medieval 2 Let's Plays on YouTube, I, 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 something's wrong with your search engine, my friend. This game is old as the hills. There's bajillions of Medieval 2 Let's Plays out there. Our mission is to serve the Emperor, uphold the law, and protect the citizens. Leg it, yeah. <laughs> Leg it. All right. Soldiers win wars. You blasted storm cloaks. Oh look, some undead. There you go. This undead guy's got the correct voice. It's a bunch of Draugr. Yeah, locked morale can't be broken. They're um, fighting these guys is in always interesting. I'm just going to have to lay siege to Fort Dunstead, aren't I? The Stormcloaks of being annoying about it. Fine. They, I mean, they can only last for five turns anyway, so screw them. There we go. Relations worsened to reasonable with the Stormcloaks. Interesting. Relations with the Stormcloaks were reasonable? I mean, they were better than reasonable? We are at war, you know. Uh, let's see. Can we upgrade anything important? We can. We can give it communal fields. What would that get us? That extra. How about a port? What would that get us? Very little. Almost nothing. Definitely not worth doing. Roads? Nothing. Communal field is a maybe then. Upvale. Can't afford to build rotation fields here. Could build shipwright though. That would get us, again, virtually nothing. And actually would lose us a bit of money through corruption. So forget that. Upgrading the fields would, would get us a chunk extra. But nah. Oh, hello. Some more brigands. Trust me. We have nothing to say to one another. Alchemist Laboratory, huh? This building allows you to craft potions, train your alchemists, and also educate your administrative generals. Yeah, that's a thing. They, thanks to the Lua scripting engine, this mod has a whole alchemy system for your main characters, which is a bit nuts. I haven't I've had a chance to interact with it much, though. Building roads would get us a bit more dosh, but not very much. Is there a town around here that would really benefit from, from an upgrade? About Shaden Hall. Oh, Shaden Hall can build mines. That would get us buckets of cash. We can't afford it this turn, though, so yeah, we'll leave it then in that case. And next turn, I'll build mines in Shaden Hall. All right, see you, Norbert Falco. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by. For the Emperor, what is it? How are folks liking the mod overall? I, 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 chat's reactions seem to be mixed. Um, through no no 
on purpose fault of my own. I haven't necessarily shown off the mod in its best light this evening. Um, but... For the Emperor. You know. I think for what for what it's trying to do, it is a ridiculously ambitious mod. And yes, the man. fact that it gets e even like 50% of the way there is actually very impressive. Sire. I'm inclined to be very generous to this mod. Because I honestly, I am having a lot of fun with it. I think it's a good laugh. Sure, it's full of a lot of placeholder stuff and, you know, it's a little unstable, but it's still a work in progress, so what are you going to do, right? Oh, hello. Anvil's being blockaded by those damned elves. If I were to attack you... I would lose, so don't. Uh, <laughs> what do I have here? Just some galleys. Yeah. Your Majesty. For the glory of the Empire. All right, enter. I'm going to be doing a Total War Let's Play on the channel, on YouTube, that is, in the near future. Uh, I had toyed with the idea of doing this mod as the Let's Play, but um, it's not, it's not, it's not quite there yet. It's, it's not quite there yet, as we've seen. Maybe in the future, though. I don't know. I think I think the uh, the guy who's working on the mod right now, the or rather the unofficial patch, which is like the sub mod, which expands it. Um, I think it's literally just one bloke who doesn't even speak English natively. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's it's slow going, but but uh, he's definitely making some progress. I mean, he dropped a hot fix, which included a whole new campaign. So. Andel Pontifio. Uh, sure, he looks alright. Capture a settlement for the Kingdom of Somerset Isles. Okay, so the Kingdom of Somerset Isles, I should point out, are a different faction to the Thalmor. Um, these guys are our friends. These are the nice High Elves. They're not the nasty High Elves. Uh, okay. I want me to capture Arentia. In other words, they want me to capture this town here. That's an ambitious ask. It, I mean, it can be done. Yeah, within 15 turns, I think I can manage that. The Legion has stepped in to keep order. All right, we need Caster Jar. Who's the pr Hasseldor? Right, you're the Count of Skingrad. You can stay here. The rest of you. Good. I can use someone. I can you can join this army here. The the and along with Adrian, the last dragonborn. <laughs> Freaking Adrian. I don't know why he's called Adrian, but he is. And we just have to roll with it. Alright, we're getting a legion together here, folks. It's something res vaguely resembling a legion. Red Aran and East March are at war with each other. Oh, Red! The House Red Aran attacking the Stormcloaks? Fucking awesome get in if i had a diplomat i'd ask him for an alliance meanwhile at fort dunstad four more turns and the stormcloaks will surrender i don't i don't want to go in after them if i'm honest they uh it would be a very bloody battle and i have no way of easily retraining and reinforcing tullius's army all the way up here in skyrim right now so i would much rather wait this one out nice looking units though look at those some quality work there
Yeah, you would. I you must be thinking of a different game to the original Medieval Total War because the original Medieval Total War looks nothing like this. Medieval, the original Medieval Total War has a paper map for one thing. It's a big flat paper map that you move pieces around on, like you're playing Risk. Um, it it looks nothing like this. It's a totally different game. Great game. Love the original Medieval Total War. Fantastic game. Totally different from this, though. Yeah, yeah, we switched to the Empire. We switched to the Fourth Era Empire because the uh, Ashlander campaign was uh, <laughs> not a great idea, as it turned out. I should have tested it beforehand. <laughs> It was a nice idea. It was a nice idea of trying to trying to conquer Vardenfels, the Ashlanders, but um, they're not a very not, not, not a great faction right now. They're very placeholdery, very not very balanced very well. They have issues. Not not all, in addition to the fact that the Nerevarin, if you play as the Ashlanders, is um has a texture glitch and therefore looks like the Silver Surfer because he's glowing silver. <laughs> oh, there's their army. They were hiding in the woods. Oh, I'm going to kill you where you stand pretty damn soon, me old mate. Just as soon as Adrian the Dragonborn catches up with us here. <laughs> I need his blades. I wouldn't mind Decentius Olin's uh, battle mages either, actually, come to think of it. In fact, hold on. Are we not allowed to recruit... Um... Oh. Ah, I think the Mages Guild reward glitched out a bit there, because it said we could only recruit the Mages Guild conjurers next turn, and then next turn they're gone, so... That obviously is a bug and needs fixing. Never mind. Six more turns, we can get some Arcane University mages, and they are like little... Little, little artillery pieces in blue frocks. They are great. We definitely want some of those. I could I could go into, as I said, I could go into the export description unit.txt file and I could rename Adrian here to Claudius. Although he would be Claudius walking around in Nordic armor and a horned helmet and that would just be wrong, so... His heavy cohorts making their way all the way over from Fort Such. Is Fort Such calming down a bit yet? They are a little bit. Just a little. Um, should we build those mines in Shaden Hall I mentioned? That would be a good idea. That'll get us lots of money. Loads of money. And virtually no corruption either. Like 17 in corruption. Who cares? 17 septums. You can you can barely buy a beer for that in Cyrodiil. Our mission is to serve the Emperor. It's like a cheese wheel's worth of septums. <laughs> Versus would be making about three grand from it. Oh look, it's a little Khajiit diplomat. Would you wish to speak to me? Oh, he doesn't sound like a Khajiit. That makes me sad. But then maybe a Khajiit diplomat doesn't. Maybe a Khajiit diplomat speaks impeccable Cyrodiilic with no accent. That would make sense, actually. He would sound like friggin'. He'd be like, like, oh my god, Prince John from the Disney Robin Hood animated film. That's 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 what a Khajiit who speaks perfect Cyrodiilic sounds like. That's that's him right there. <laughs> In turn. 
make the liar anywhere? I don't think so, but then again, there's a lot of weird shit crammed into this mod, so maybe he's in here somewhere, I don't know. He could be a, th a named thief character for one of the Khajiit factions, for all I know. A uh, thief character, spy even. Drozakar. Oh, he's come to talk to us, looks like. From the kingdom of Anequina. I bring Trade rights and map England information. Well, I... Yes, side. please. We cannot thank you enough for accepting. Oh, uh, you're welcome. An honor and a pleasure. Farewell. When this, when this mod is a bit more polished and a bit up, more up to snuff... If it ever reaches that point, they, the thing with these modding projects is they some, sometimes just simply get abandoned, especially for an old game like this. But assuming it ever gets polished up to snuff enough, oh, here we go, the Dawn Guard. Um, what I'd love to do is, like, like I said, an Empire campaign, either either doing the main Septim campaign or with the Oblivion Crisis campaign, where you start off with the Oblivion Crisis already happening. Uh on like the hardest possible difficulty and you just have to try and keep the empire together amidst all the chaos i think that'd be really fun i would hopefully that would theoretically be a lot like playing as the western roman empire in attila just trying to keep the whole house from falling down i think that'd be really really cool anyway the dawn guard uh the year of the founding of the dawn guard is unknown exact documents on its activity has not been preserved blah 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 Today, the Order of the Dawn Guard was restored by one of the foreign rulers. Oh yeah, that's a thing you can do. That's like, if you control Fort Dawn Guard as a faction, you can choose to um, rebuild the, the the Dawn Guard, and you can recruit them as units on, on, on the campaign map. It's pretty, pretty sweet. So I'm going to assume, in that case, that, uh, yeah, the Stormcloaks have taken Fort Dawn Guard, and they're... Uh, They've set up the Dawn Guard. Um, Hasta Gerald. Sure. Daggerfall has declared war on Wayrest. Well, tough to break old habits, I guess. One of our allies has forced a decision upon us by going to war with another people we have embraced as friends. You idiots! Well, that means that the Isle of Balfier is now suddenly in a bit of a sticky wicket, isn't it? It's 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 in. Would you prefer it? We should we side with the aggressor? So we're siding with Daggerfall or Wayrest on this one, basically. I guess we'll side with Wayrest. They're closer. So no. Yeah, we're no longer allied with Daggerfall. Not at war with them, at least, but... Yeah. Dungeon Faction is the... Is a, is a sort of... Um... I was going to say placeholder, but that's not correct. Um, it's a faction that exists solely to populate the dungeons across the map. Uh, for example, this one here. If I just quickly toggle off the fog of war. Fort, Fort Blackboot, where Wendanian Wick here. Uh, all of these little dungeons across the map. Fort Sinia, Fanacas, Lagerspur. Actually, no, that's a, that's a that's an orc town. Never mind, that's not a dungeon. <laughs> um, they're all um, they're all populated by dungeon monsters, and you can sometimes get quests given to you by the guilds to go clear them out. Yes, my. They're not a proper faction. Essentially, they're literally just they're just a thing that exists for gameplay mechanic purposes. All right, Adrian. All right, we got a full stack now. Sweet. Move you boys into Skingrad. 
Do you seek an audience with it? Like Thing is, do I want to attack now with what I've got here? I don't think I do. I want to send the town guards, bless them. Bless their cotton socks. Uh, yeah, I'm going to send all five units of town guards here back to Skingrad. They're probably going to be very relieved by that. And next turn, we'll we'll bring the heavy cohorts up. We'll bring the the battle mages up. Because town guards are shite. They are rubbish. The El the 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 the, the Thalmor will turn them into mincemeat. Meanwhile, at Fort Dunstad, three more turns until they surrender. Assuming they don't send an army up here to relieve them. What is it? I don't know what kind of stats these guys have. Armored Stormcloaks. Attack 13, defense 13. Versus Tullius's guys. Each legionnaire must be his better self at all times and under all conditions. Yeah, we could take him. In a stand-up fight, we could take the Stormcloaks, no problem. Especially since a lot of Tullius's guys have armor and weapon upgrades and experience. So yeah. They have pretty high attack for a bog basic unit, but... Being Nords, they get an attack bonus, I guess. The bone breaks look like they're probably quite tough. And his bodyguard unit's probably very good too, but... Yeah. I almost I would almost like them to send a little stack up here to try and relieve them and then I could take them both out at once. Maybe. Fort Greymore. I can get a few reinforcements from Fort Greymore. Not very much though. The problem is if I start losing guys in this army. Tullius ain't getting any goddamn reinforcements. Like not for a very long time. I'm, I'm frankly tempted to just recall him to Cyrodiil at this point. Because I don't know what good he's actually going to do out here. But we'll see, I guess. We'll, do, we'll have to evaluate it based on how many casualties we take fighting for Fort Dunstad here. The Empire is man's last bastion. I know there's a sire without a damn Thalmor sire. army in these woods here yes, somewhere. Sire. Yes, my lord. Your orders, sire. Yes. So sire. I don't particularly want to get ambushed by if I can help it. Health, magic, or stamina for a level up. <laughs> it's got to be health, right? Can't go wrong with health. I wonder if the undead are doing anything interesting out there on the campaign map. I believe their capital is Sankrator. Oh, Dragon Raid. Okay, interesting. Right, this guy I guess will recruit. I mean, it looks a bit rubbish, but the thing is it's extra. It's extra heavy cavalry at this point. And El Pontifio feels unappreciated. Well, tough luck, chum. Ah, Empretise Mead has Alchemy Formula Magica. Alchemy Formula Magic. What? I don't even know what that means. We'll find out. Helgen was attacked by a dragon, you say? Oh dear.
it uh, didn't do an awful lot of damage though, did it, in the end, really? I think it only killed four soldiers. It's a, it's a, the game uses the natural disaster mechanic from vanilla to do dragon attacks. It's quite clever, really, if you think about it. Oh, hello! In these grave times, each legionnaire must be... The measure of a man is taken at the moment of his death. And know this for truth. The ghosts of many heroes... Oh, I don't want to abandon the siege. We're, we've only got two turns left. Oh, hopefully they might attack us, though. And then we can just fight a field battle. There's a lot that Bethesda should do with the Elder Scrolls license that they don't do. It, it's actually a little bit frustrating sometimes. For the glory of the Empire. It wasn't long before I saw the Lego. For the Imperial Be on your way. They should write, for one thing, they should write way more books. They should publish way more books. They should be churning out black library levels of, of books set in the Elder Scrolls universe. That's the thing they should be doing. Um, they should be making a proper tabletop game, like Warhammer style. Warhammer Fantasy style tabletop game. Um, they should be making a strategy game for the PC based on the Elder Scrolls. There's loads of shit they should be doing, but aren't for some reason. They're just sitting on loads of great ideas they can use their license for, and they're just not doing it. Actually, we need to move you here, don't we? Move this unit of archers out. Move you in. Because you are going to make Prince Ebel commander of the Legion. Or am I not allowed to do that? Oh, apparently not. That's annoying. Never mind then! How many archers do we have in this stack right now? Three units? Yeah, you can go back to Skingrad. Soldiers win wars. Where to put them is the key. So we've got now... These guys are all excellent heavy cavalry. we got some slightly crappy light legionnaires. We've got a unit of Imperial Scouts. Some heavy cohorts, battle mages. And a unit of blades, courtesy of the Dragonborn here. Maro, when he finally gets his ass over here several turns from now, he's going to form the core of a second army, I think. And, uh, yeah, we want to go try and take Orentia next, I think. Your Majesty, without question, sire. Yes, sire. Without really wish I had some spies now, right now so I could do some proper scouting of Thalmor territory, but... Alas, we don't. I'm just going to have to move this diplomat around a little bit. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Tabletop RPG. Yes, they're not an official Elder Scrolls tabletop RPG. Well, yeah, they, they, if that's if that's the case, then that's another thing they should be doing. Goodness sake. I actually, for some reason, I thought there was a, a, an official Elder Scrolls tabletop RPG, but if there isn't, then... Fuck's sake, Bethesda. What are you doing? Bethesda, Zenimax, whoever's responsible. Microsoft, even. Whoever's responsible. Why are you not doing these things? There are fan-made conversions. That might be why I'm confused then. I might have seen talk of somebody playing a fan-made thing. We seem to be getting these every turn at the minute, don't we? Yep, sure. Welcome aboard. Um, I 
Oh yeah, I need to check on Titus Mead and his alchemy thing. Whatever that's about. Titus Mead cooking up some alchemy. I don't even know how that works. I, I, he has a mortar and pestle. Enables the character to craft alchemy potions. Ooh, recruit those battle mages. Do we need to make an alchemy workshop or something here? Military Academy. Oh. Do we already have one? Doesn't look like it. We've got the Temple of the One. That's pretty neat. We've got White Gold Tower. Also pretty neat. <laughs> Gives you a ridiculous public health bonus and, and public order bonus for some reason. Not that I'm complaining. We don't have an alchemy workshop though. You can build them. I don't know how, though. Maybe we just can't build them in cities. Maybe it's a castle thing. Um, Great market. Or oh, shipwright. Uh, shipwright. More trade for the trade god, which would be Zenithar, I think. <laughs> the Empire is man's last uh, so the Stormcloaks still have not attacked us. Looks like they've got one turn remaining. They, I reckon they want to sally forth and then, then get this guy to help them out when it happens. I assume that's what their plan is here. In which case, fine! I'll fight you all! Outside the walls, if I have to. In fact, I would actually prefer that. Imperial business. Be on your way. How long until... Firewall's mines have set up here. Three more turns. Cool. Our income is is not too bad. It says minus fifteen hundred right there, but it's because we just bought a load of stuff. With the power of corner cat, I don't like to do corner camping though. To be honest with you, I um I hate cheesing my um my total war games. Wasn't long before I saw more of the world when I get around to doing the LP on YouTube, you'll see what I mean. But I, I tend to get very into it. I role play it a bit and, and and what have you. When I'm playing historical Total War games, I try to build historically accurate armies and stuff. I'm a total nerd for it, as you'll inevitably end up seeing. So I, I don't use the corner camping strap because it's I find it silly. Where is this Aldmeri army? Where has it gone? I'm sure he must be hiding in some woods here somewhere. I could just go kill these brigands, but that would be a great way to just lose a bunch of troops for no good reason. So, um, we're gonna just leave him alone. And I suppose that's that right there. We have just explained exactly why Skyrim is so full of bandits in the game. Skyrim, I mean. Because General Tullius is like, the fuck am I going to waste good good troops on fighting bandits for? These grave times, each legionnaire must be his better self at all times. There he is. Okay, we managed to avoid an ambush. Sweet. Hello, Captain. Right, this is not the same guy, actually. This is just a tiny stack, but I will murder them all the same. We've got Dominion Archers and Altmeri Heavy Archers. All right. He's probably going to retreat. Yes, he is. For the glory of the not all the way to the walls, though. That was that. This could not have turned out better. Hold on, I'm just gonna save. Because we've not done a save in ages, and this mod is prone to crashing. So. Oh, I've not got enough movement points. Typical. I wanted to initiate a fight there so that they would have to sally forth out of the town to aid him, and then I could just kill them all outside the walls. And save myself a hell of a lot of trouble. But tragically, I just didn't have quite enough move points to do that. You, of all people, Fucking out. annoying. Never mind. Hello, Mr. Dude. Tendil. Eldenwood Warriors. That's his bodyguard, you know, apparently. Oh, I, I guess they're Bosma by the sounds of it. I think he's a Bosma character. Interesting. Long range missiles. 
accuracy very high. They sound scary. <laughs> uh... An army of Fargoth there. What a scary prospect. Should we upgrade? Wait. Skingrad can get a ship? Oh, I suppose it can, because it's got access to the... Whatever this river's called, I've forgotten. The Panther River? No, the Panther River's all the way over here somewhere. I forget what this river's called, but it's got access to that. Which is... It, I mean, it's a river, but as far as the game is concerned, it's like a... It's a, it's a, it's a tiny sliver of ocean, so... Uh, but technically, we can do river trade down it, I guess. Let's have a look. That would get us nothing, apparently. Rotation fields would get us a decent chunk of money. Roads would get us quite a bit more money, though. So paved roads it is. Unless, is there a market available? Considering... Actually, no, it's not much cheaper at all. Yeah, get the paved roads. Uh, I decided to switch from the Ashlander campaign because it really was just extremely jank and not very good. So we're playing as the Empire instead in the fourth era. Battling the damnable Thalmor. Curse them. And the Stormcloaks, of course. Don't forget the Stormcloaks. Our mission is to serve the Emperor. Yep, totally the Does he have a unique bodyguard at all? No, he just has regular General's bodyguards. Okay cool the ashlanders need a little bit of work so there's now you can build an alchemist lab in coral can't build one in the imperial city though as far as i can tell let's have a look at the building browser what do you need for an alchemy lab I don't know, just, you just need a city. That's it. And the Imperial City is a city, so... Uh, oh, here's the thing. It's from the Lua plugin. Uh, guild points for available guilds. You can have a look here. Thieves Guild, interested. 135 points. How to get points. How to lose points. See, I'm trying at the moment to get the Thieves Guild interested by leaving Breville ungoverned and building commerce buildings there. I really should be doing more of that, actually. I reckon a brothel might, might give us some Thieves Guild points, though. It feels like it should. So I can get a Thieves Guild established. Like it. Yeah, the Ashlanders are a bit, um... I mean, for one thing, the, the faction feels a little bit unfinished. And for another thing, um... The Talvani, who we were fighting, also feel a bit unfinished. They don't even have any custom settlements yet, so... Essentially, I was basically just playing vanilla Medieval 2 with, with Elder Scrolls units. And it just didn't feel very fun, so I decided to switch. Because I know from experience, because I've already played this a bit, that the Empire are much more fun to play as. Oh, finally. Here we go. Excellent. Finally going to kill some Stormcloaks, everybody. Or be killed by the Stormcloaks. I'm not sure which. They're attacking from opposite directions, which is actually very helpful. You might not think so, but it is, because it means I have the chance to overwhelm one half of their army while I am... Um, while the other half tries to catch up.
Yes, I mean, I I was very disappointed when we when we loaded in at, at Voss and discovered it was just a bunch of vanilla Mediterranean houses. But never mind, never mind. There he is, there's Tullius. Sounding a little bit more English than Canadian. There's the general's bodyguard unit. It's the, uh... It's like the, they're like the Imperial Palace Guards. They've got that armor on. But they're very, very good. So Tullius and his lads will hopefully be carrying us. I like that he's got a unique model, though. That's neat. That's a nice touch. He doesn't look like a generic general. He actually looks like Tullius. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that. Yeah, he's got he's got a little Morrowind vintage Imperial short sword there. Nice, I approve. All right, we got some very wacky terrain to play on today. It looks like we'll try and get up the slope a bit, although. I wonder where they'll deploy is the question. If we wanted this to work, I need to overwhelm them quickly, which means I need to hope that they decide to deploy here. And not like all the way up there or something. This is not ideal terrain for the kind of battle I want to fight, if I'm honest. The other Stormcloaks, the majority of them... Well, I think it's the majority of them. Yeah, they'll be coming from that direction over here. Right, I'm going to deploy up along this line here and hope it works out. All right, spearmen. I'm, I'm going to do late Roman Empire style. I'm going to put the spearmen at the front. Although I don't have a lot of spearmen, so I don't know if that's really going to work. I've got a cohort legion cohort phalanx, though. That'll do. They'll bloody do. No, I don't want you at the end. I want you in the middle. So your flanks are protected. You geniuses. There we go. You guys are going to be helpful. Alright. And then directly behind them, we'll put all the swordsmen. You are both swordsmen, right? Yeah. Right, bowmen, archers. Oh, we do have some light legion SP spearmen we can bulk up the front with. Okay, good, good. We'll put, actually, what we'll do, we'll put these guys on the flanks. I don't think the Stormcloaks have any cavalry, but just in case. Uh, and then we got Tullius, we got this dude. And we got all these cavalry. Uh, I'll give you... A flank each. I suppose arguably I should give Tullius the extra unit cavalry. He's more important after all. And then we've got the battle mages. Who I think hopefully if I can deploy here with a good view they'll be able to do some damage. There they are. Got a nice vantage point there. We've got... Oh, more archers. Oops. There we go. Okay. Let's hope this works. The enemy They're right there. Okay, good. Men. They hope to make up in numbers what they lack in gallantry. There they all are, and they'll should they should come towards us, thankfully, because they are attacking. All right, cavalry, get around behind them. Tullius, you can lead your boys up that way. You know what? We really need to 
yeah, more like that would be good. Where are the pikemen? You need to come out of pike formation and run, please. Those archers in the back? What are those? Bunch of, yeah, just storm cloaks. Okay. Go on, boys. Get a proper charge off for me. Pushing the definition of proper charge here, boys. This is not working out the way it was supposed to at all. What are you doing? Retreat. Getting cavalry in Medieval 2 to behave is a mission and a half. Good God. Oh, that's the battle mage. Just shooting fireballs there. Can you see that? The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. Here we go. Lancers down. Beautiful. Oh, very, very nice. Well done. There's only 43 guys left alive now in that Stormcloak squad. <laughs> All right, these these archers are already routing. The enemy general flees like the coward he is. Press on. Our men have captured Ah, we've the got him. General. Beautiful. Guard him well and make it so he can see us defeat the rest of his army. <laughs> the enemy are badly Ah, oh, this is going excellently. Yeah, Imperial Legion yeah, Cavalry are no fucking joke. Pursue Compare this down. to the goddamn Gua we were using as the Ashlanders. We are there any left? They look like they're all routing. Oh, well, they'll, well, of course, there's their reinforcements, which means you boys all need to get turned around, like, right now. Quick, toot sweet. Let the, let the cavalry mop up these routers. You guys pin the reinforcements in place. Oh boy, they are coming at us quite quick, aren't they? Stormcloaks seem to move very quickly, don't they? Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we Our will boys here are rather them. slow. Okay, okay, we're managing to we're managing to get this formed up more or less. What's wrong with Guar? Um, unfortunately, in this game, they are crap. They're not beasts of war; they're beasts of burden. At the end of the day, they're not very good. Okay. Okay, there's not a lot of storm cloaks left alive up here. Get you guys over there, ready to do some flanking shenanigans again. We're under attack. Uh, pikemen. Get deployed in pike formation, please. Why are you archers just in the wrong place entirely? Why are you doing that? Why are you the way that you are, archers? I didn't tell you to move there, and yet you moved there anyway. You need to charge these storm cloaks, or is that not enough? Dis that's not enough distance. Forget it. Forget it. Pull back. Let's get you all maneuvered up over there. You guys in guard mode? No, but you should be. Is a bunch of storm cloaks with two handed weapons. Defeat seems certain. I'm surprised at that actually. The bone breakers are attacking us in the middle the here. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. They are public enemy number one as far as my cavalry are concerned. In you go. Tullius as well, go after those archers. And there's general bodyguards at the back there as well. Oh hello, cat. You've picked a great time to march around in front of me on the desk. 
Do you want to sit on my lap? Is that why you're here? Come on then. Colin's here, everybody. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, yes. Good tidings. The enemy general there he dead. goes. We've sent the base cur to hell. These rustics are so inept. Alright, you guys fall back. I think the, these storm cloaks seem to be quite obsessed with you. They're happy to chase you to the ends of the earth right now. That's fine by me. Battle mages, archers, go ahead and fill them with arrows. Let's pull out there. You guys chasing away routing storm cloaks? You are. They're not routing though, and there's a bunch of spearmen, so forget it. You guys being shot to pieces. Certainly looks like it. Armored storm cloaks. Uh, you do have spears. You know what, cavalry? You've done enough. You've you've done well. Get back over here. Let the infantry deal with the rest. I didn't mean to press the G button there, but I've messed up my group now. Oh, there's actually still some guys here routing. Uh, battle mages. Would you like to shoot them instead? I'm pretty sure those fireballs of yours are probably armoured piercing, so killing some armoured stormflakes with them would be a grand idea. Only half the enemy force remains. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. So what's left of the general's unit, yeah. seem to be routing at this point. Just a stubborn little unit in the middle here. Even the, yeah, even the general's bodyguard are routing now. Send the cab back out again to mop up. Uh, archers. You can stop now. It looks like we lost a few of you guys to archers of their own. Where are their archers at? Kill them. that you guys get back down here no sense in you running around out there get the line fawn back up again armored storm cloak spearman uh, like you to not be tangling with general Tullius, please these light legionnaires you can have fun with them pin them down and we'll charge them from the rear Tullius, you've done quite enough for one day. Back over there. Oh my god, the banner bear is just stuck in the middle of it all. Alright, lovely. They've had enough. Bad day to be a storm cloak, apparently.
Oh, this takes me back to my Arthurian Total War days. Micromanaging heavy cavalry. It's good fun. This also takes me back to my Arthurian Total War, day, war days. Absolutely brain dead pathfinding when it comes to chasing routing units. Again, I think I've been a sp I spoiled by Rome 2 and Attila when it comes to that. I forgot how bad this was. Jen just, just politely escorting the enemy off the battlefield rather than actually running them down. Teddy Bistol, what like we call those weekdays? Yes, a day ending in Y. <laughs> yeah. Tullius' lads. Slightly blood spattered in places, yep. Most of it not their blood, I suspect. Tullius himself, no exception, I think. Oh, wait, no, actually. Nope, he's just a bit muddy. His adjutant here, on the other hand, though, is caked in the stuff. Of course, I'm pretty sure in the lore, the Stormcloaks were never stupid enough to engage in an open battle like this, and that's what the problem was. really need to chase the general's bodyguard down we've killed the general so they're going to despawn after the battle's over on the other hand though why let the rebel scum get away Slow motion galloping for some reason, probably because we're exhausted. Whatever, we're done. This is a clear Only lost 214 men, men of and of those, a few were healed. Cohort Phalanx healed 14, Archers healed some, Spearmen healed some. Who takes the cake for a number of casualties? Heavy Legion Cohort Archers, apparently, with 271 kills. That's impressive. That just totally happened in the background. I didn't even notice that. It's making me nervous about fighting the, the, the Thalmor with their Archer spam, frankly. <laughs> but, you know, if we've got enough cavalry, Archer spam means nothing. So... We'll be fine. One of my biggest complaints with newer Total War games is how overpowered ranged units are in them. Not really the case in this mod, though. Definitely not the case in other, other mods for this game. Play Europa Barbarorum 2. You might as well not even bring archers. <laughs> They're rubbish. Um, Alright, that's a lot of prisoners. And uh, I think we're going to execute them all as traitors. Although that's a, that's a very tasty ransom value. We can't afford to be oh, merciful no. here. We're not getting any reinforcements. Oh, oh no. By the gods. This can't be happening. I'll make sure the Emperor himself is all you would like. We'll mount your heads on spikes outside the Imperial City. Right. Captured settlement. Uh, are we sacking it? Or are we occupying it, I think. Are the mages in this? Yes, I was using battle mages in that battle. Is there dread? Yes, there is. I fancy the idea of, uh, of General Tullius maxing out his dread. Of course, I don't know if uh, I don't know if Dread has exactly the same effects in this mod as it does in Vanilla, because there's, in all likelihood it doesn't. Tullius 
players going all Colonel Kurtz. I mean, he wasn't about to spare anyone who was going to the block in Helgen at the start of Skyrim, so I have no reason to believe he would let all those Stormcloaks go, go there. He was quite happy to execute them all in the actual game, so... I'm just role-playing here. Honest. Lord of the Aldmeri died. Leader of the Aldmeri Dominion has died. Now the strongest of the aspirants will be seated on the throne. Interesting. I'm not sure we care very much, honestly, but hey. Uh, Thulsa Terentius. Sure. Ah, he's in the Imperial City. The new guy. All right. Well, we took Fort Dunstad. But at what cost? Well, the cost was about... Slightly less than 200 guys. That was the cost. We could build stables. Let's do, yeah, let's do that. Let's build some stables and we can recruit some spare cavalry if we need to. It'll just be crappy town guard cavalry, but hey, it's something. So now we've got Dunstad and Greymoor. They should do a... Um, they've done a provincial campaign for just Vardenfell. Um, oh yeah, I forgot how fucked up Vardenfell is in the fourth era <laughs> oh boy <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway yeah I, they've done a provincial campaign for Vardenfell in this mod it'd be great if they did one for Skyrim just for the civil war that'd be really good the whole map is literally just Skyrim with Harfingar the Imperials Stormcloaks and maybe the Reachmen down in the corner that'd be a really good campaign to play scatter the undead faction around in some of the barrows if you want to you know with castle Volkahar as its capital which is in the game by the way i shall show you oh forget this just toggle fov fow even yeah it's there castle Volkahar is in attendance I'd be amazed if it has a custom battle map, but uh, it's there. Right, Adventus Caecinius. I've got a job for you, my son. I'm going to march your ass over here and build me a watchtower. And then march your ass back to the fort, and we'll do the same thing again next turn, but we'll build some more, more watchtowers over here. I'm going to have to be careful, though, because you never know, there might be a Stormcloak army hiding in these woods. It would not be great to be ambushed by them. Tolius has got an aspiring commander. Siege engineer. Even though there wasn't really a siege, but hey. And Trenus Quintilla has got the sign of the tower, apparently. Well done, boys. Well done. And we can recruit some stuff from here, too. Some basic light legionnaires and, and watch archers, but still better than nothing. The Reachmen are in this, by the way, in case you were wondering. Um, they don't have much territory, and they're not playable at the moment. They're not a playable faction, but they do have Sun Guard. Um, and they have... Oh, that's New Orsinium. That's, that's the Orcs. Um... More like new new Orsinium at this point, but hey. They do have Dunlane, Cloud Spring. Uh, don't they have a settlement over here somewhere? Or is that one of the early era campaigns? It might be in the third era campaign. But yeah, the Reachmen are about. New, new, new Orsinium. Yeah. I forget how many times it's been destroyed at this point in the timeline. <laughs> You're A rebel army of brigands outside Bruma. 
raid in my my trade routes. How dare they? I could send out the count to go deal with it, but I honestly can't be bothered. How's Hyrock doing? I, it sounds like it's a mess. Daggerfall declared war on Wayrest some time back. There's Daggerfall. Uh, there's Wayrest, who seem to control Coegria here and also Wayrest itself. I say Wayrest itself. Galvadon, apparently. Wayrest itself is a rebel town. Did you guys have a rebellion? I think you might have had a rebellion or a civil war or something. Somebody either put the taxes too high or, <laughs> or had, a, had, a, had a governor with too low loyalty. Oh dear. And then you've got... What are, this, what are these guys called again? Sean Helm up here and then... Who are the other guys? Evermore. There we go. As I said, I, 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 uh, you probably could play a nice campaign up here as one of these factions, but um, it would be an awful lot like playing med vanilla medieval too. I mean, <laughs> look at him. We have garrisons throughout all the provinces of the empire. Our mission. May the gods keep you. They're uh, they're just vanilla medieval too, guys. We have garrisons throughout all the provinces. Wretched nobles, look, they're they're medieval the two knights. Hold the law. Protect. I mean. Nothing wrong with playing them, I suppose. Really, I mean, if you if that's your vibe, if you're a big Daggerfall fan and you want to you want to play out like the Battle of Kringane Field and all that kind of good shit, then I honestly go for it. Actually, probably be quite fun. Um, probably one of the more feature complete areas of the map, really, as well, because it can lean more heavily on vanilla assets. Um, but personally. I'd rather play in one of the one of the more Elder Scrollsy factions. For the glory of the right, Empire. these Thalmor then. Die, rebel. Oh, lovely! You're gonna come out and fight me, are you? Excellent. All right, Prince Ebel. I assume you're the faction heir. You are, yeah. That's right. You are called Prince, after all. You are High Chancellor. Time Get down to, to prove point. yourself, young Prince. Slightly more trees than I'd like on a battlefield, but it'll do. Okay, we have a lot of characters in this army. <laughs> Including the Dragonborn. He's going to be front and centre with his blades. Oh, and you've got Pentasoculatus as well. I didn't realise that. Okay. Well, you and the Dragonborn can hang out at the front. There you go, he's even got a custom model. He's crouching right now because he's in the trees, but there you go. Yes, yes, that, that the legendary last dragon board, born Adrian. Ugh. Why did they, why, why, never mind. <laughs> Some sort of inside joke on the part of the mod maker, naturally. We don't have a ton of spearmen in this army, do we? Pop you over here. And we'll pop you over here. We've got battle mages. We've got archers. Who 
that I don't want on skirmish mode. And then we've got a crap load of cavalry. A bucket load of cavalry. Just the way I like it. The enemy are bringing in reinforcements. Assemble the men. Right, where are they? We're are they... watching you. Oh, naturally they've deployed all the way up here. Okay. Oh no, you're not, you're not behaving properly. Uh, maybe if I just group you guys. Are you actually, yeah, okay, there we go. Alright, screw that then. You're all marching up this hill and deploying here. And you guys. Yeah, just get up here. Let's see what these guys want to do. They're bringing their army over this way. Let's have a look at them, shall we? Foul more scum. Bosma scum. That's that nasty unit of archers, right? That's the... That's the Thalmor General's bodyguard of, like, really good archers, isn't it? Definitely want to kill them. With a nice cavalry charge. Do they have a lot of spearmen? They've got this unit of spearmen. Those are swordsmen. This unit of spearmen. Okay, so two units of spearmen. That we'll need to try and avoid if, if at all possible. Oh, uh, what about you? Archers. Archers. Alright, in that case. Get him. Kill him. Don't wait around. Murder them before they can link up with the rest of their force. <laughs> Look at the town guards go. But hey, you know what? They're not they're not great, but they are at, at the very least they are cavalry with lances. And that means they're going to kill a lot of archers right now. Well, not quite as many as I hoped they would, admittedly. are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Come on, guys. Pull out of that. Need you to move your asses. Apparently, Thalmor archers are dead hard. What the fuck's going on here? You've sent one guy in? Two guys in? Medieval 2, why... Why do you do this to me? That's more like it. Look at him go flying. Oh boy. Yes, absolute massacre. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bodyguard cavalry kick ass as it turns out. You guys are being useless. But you are just town guards, so I'm kind of I'm expecting a lot from for, not very much, much right now. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. What are these guys doing? Not a lot. Can't see most of their army right now. It's all in the sodding woods. Although some of it looks like it's coming towards us here. Indeed it is. Are they light archers? Kill them. Spearmen. Heavy swordsmen. Okay, yes, you did just kill a chunk of Bosma. That's nice. Alright, get up here away from those spearmen. 
Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Oh, nice. Okay, the battle mages are opening up. Shoot the spearmen. Everybody shoot the spearmen, please. They're public enemy number one right now. Meanwhile, over here... Oh, beautiful. Yeah, they're done for. Need to get some of them arcane university majors. They their fireballs are like they're like catapult shots. Essentially, they do area of effect damage, and they're amazing. Okay, these guys are getting massacred by the legion archers. These these heavy cohort archers are insanely good. Where's their other unit of dudes? As their Eldenwood warriors, them I would like dead. You move out there, and then charge them in the flank. Uh, that's a bunch of heavy swordsmen. I don't really want you tangling in melee with them. I'd like you to retreat and then charge them properly. What's going on over here? Ah, you have some pikemen slowly advancing towards you. Let's move away from them, shall we? You shoot them in the back. How are we getting over here? Have you just killed a bunch of these guys? It looks like you kind of have. Withdraw, please. Oh, yes. Not very many of them left. Keep moving. Oh, the enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Fact, just charge them. You can ch chase after those guys. Keep running away from the pikemen. If you please. I will maneuver some cavalry around behind. Fact, actually. Go chase them. I don't want any of them retreating back to the city. Charging pikemen in the rear is always a bit of a risky prospect in Total War games because pikes don't obey the laws of physics. They're able to turn them around straight through their own men. On this occasion, though, it seems to have worked out relatively well. You don't want to stick around, though. Okay, that was a pathetic charge, boys. Absolutely pathetic. How are things going over here? Oh, you caught up with the swordsman again. Right, just retreat through our own lines force them to actually attack us properly instead of chasing you around. They have one guy left here, they do. <laughs> Apparently two of them left. Oh yeah, there's the there's the Thalmor general. About to do a Leonidas and die to a thousand arrows at once. Or possibly a fireball. They seem to be distracted with this unit here. Or are they? Are they just withdrawing right now? Oh, 
Wavering, go on, route. You know you want to. They're routing. Beautiful. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will uh, smash the enemy. As you can see, mages do have ammo. In air quotes. Just think of it as their magicka bar. Magicka bar. An abstraction of their magicka and their potion supply. It's kind of what balances them out, really. That and the fact that they cost a ton of money to recruit. Alright. Archers. You've done enough. You can stop. Same with the battle mages. Thing, thing, the other thing about battle mages or mages in general as well is I, as far as I can tell from the testing I've done um, oh hello the swords were still here as far as I can tell with the testing I've done um, mages don't do friendly fire unlike for, like every other missile unit in the game I don't think mages do friendly fire which makes them quite useful from that perspective as well Except for maybe the AOE guys, they probably do friendly fire. But I think the um, I think the regular little fireballs, like the ones we saw in this battle, I think I think they are like the sort of technically, I think as far as the game is concerned, the game engine. They're haha, <laughs> look at that, trampled to death. As far as the game is concerned, they're like um, gunpowder units that have like 100% accuracy. Which means that they basically never hit friendly units. But it depends on the on the attacking question, as we saw with the um, with the Telvani masters when we were playing as the Ashlanders. Those guys could definitely do friendly fire because they just shoot indiscriminate beams of magic everywhere. But the battle mages, as far as I can tell, battle mages, the Dramora mages, and the scamps, they all seem to do these um, little fireballs that home in and directly hit a target. What's left? Um, oh, these two. <laughs> Kill them! Run them down. Leave none alive. Just managed to get them before they crossed the red line. Nice. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. Yeah. Poor Dragonborn and his blades and the and the Pelitus Oculars didn't even get a chance to kill anything. At least as far as I can tell. No, casualties inflicted zero. Blades, casualties inflicted zero. They must be so disappointed. We came here to kill elves. And we didn't get to kill any elves. I should really try and resurrect the um, Knights of the Nine. I, I seem to be able to build a knight chapter house in the Imperial City, and I have to assume that's the Knights of the Nine. We should do that. Yeah, I'm afraid that was 10 years ago. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, we will naturally execute all of the Thalmot. I know we should probably theoretically rise above and be better than them or whatever, but... <laughs> the Mead dynasty doesn't 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 go in for that pi piety and, and, and... Well, on the other hand, Prince Ebel does have three points of chivalry, so maybe I should lean more into the merciful side of things. But on this occasion, no. His generals were all like, "No, you should kill them all." And he, he acquiesced to their to their demands. Let's just let's let's say that's what happened. Got a gladius, a veteran warrior, and he feels appreciated. Plus one loyalty. Very good. The glory 
Alright, we'll be taking that, I think. I'd sack it, but we'd get virtually nothing for it, so just occupy. Interesting thing, actually. Ah, we did this mission for, um... The Kingdom of Som the Somerset Isles in exile, as I assume. And I think, actually, you know what? Oh, interesting. I see. That's how this is going to work. Okay. There's a problem with this, though. And the problem with this is that... I, I don't... <sighs> I don't know if I can get a diplomat to the Kingdom of the Somerset Isles in order to actually give them the region they want. Because the Kingdom of the Somerset Isles is over here. The Dominion is here. There's like a like, there's a little there's a little tiny anti Thalmor based faction here based in Alinor at the start of this campaign. They're sort of I guess they're supposed to be an early game challenge if you're playing as the Thalmor. And um I haven't got a goddamn clue how I'm going to get a, uh, a diplomat all the way over there in how many turns? Oh, there isn't a turn limit. All right. I mean, okay, then in that case, fine. But then again, it has a penalty, so. Oh, boy. Oh, I didn't realize pressing escape would cancel it. Never mind. My relationship with a faction on the other side of the continent that I'm never going to interact with in this campaign has worsened. I'm sure I'll live. Direct rule from the Imperial City. That's what you're getting, Valenwood. However, the, uh, it actually arguably would be nice to offload this onto the, um, <clears throat> onto the onto the nice high elves because uh why well, i don't want to deal with this unrest and religious unrest this 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 is horrifying i don't want to deal with this this is dreadful i can fix it temporarily by going low taxes but god we build a chapel of the nine and start slowly converting them to the nine divines but I can build a brothel to give them extra 5%. <laughs> I came, I saw, I built a brothel. That we have forgotten them. This I fear the gods will remember. I've got a priest here, I can move him down this way. Um not that it'll help very much. On the other hand, we've got a big water fight here and we need more income, so I guess that means we need more towns. I'm pretty. We we have already restored the worship of Talos. I mean, our official faction um, religion is the Nine Divines in this mod. What one thing you do have to contend with is that at the very start of the campaign, the Thalm will have a bunch of priests all over the Empire preaching the Eight Divines to mess with your um, your religious unrest, but. Um, they don't seem terribly effective, to be honest with you, because it really, it really hasn't come up very much until now. Trust me, we have nothing to say to one another. Which means that the, the Stormcloaks really ought not to be fighting us at this point. I mean, we're actually in open warfare with the Old Merry Dominion right now, and the Stormcloaks are still fighting me, which I feel only proves that Sto that that Ul Ulrich, Ul Ulfric, whatever his name is, is just just, just a douchebag. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I'm giving you what you want. You have Talos worship and we're at war with the Dominion. What else do you want from me, Ulfric? The answer is he wants to be High, high King. Oh, hello. There we go. If we repair the Town Hall, that restores a bunch of public order. All right, cool. That'll work. He wants to be High King. 
Even if I made peace with him, he'd still be attacking uh, Halfinger. So, aka this, this loyalist Nordic faction here, the red guys. Need not waste words. Ulfric must die. It is that simple. Although, hello, undead army. Armored zombies and skeletons, huh? I'm just wandering around outside coral. That won't do. Uh, I might have to... Yeah. <laughs> Maro, you're going to have to possibly divert and deal with these undead. Because unlike just rebel, re random brigands, these guys might actually attack a town. So... <laughs> yeah. What is it? I reckon we might be able to take... The problem is... Undead have locked morale. They can't be broken. So even if their units are crap, you have to kill every single one of them, which makes dealing with them quite a challenge. Oh, look, there you go. There's a Thalmor priest right there. I'd kill you where you stand if I wasn't bound by my oath as an officer of the old Mary Dominion. Preaching his eight divines or whatever. There's a lot of Yakudan pantheon in Coral for some reason. And a bit of Daedra worship. Ultima Pantheon, Bosma Pantheon, Worshippers of Malakath, Jaka J. Thankfully, religious in, uh, unrest is nowhere near as punishing in this mod as it is in some others. Anyway, I was going to say something earlier, but before I got distracted, about um, looting, sacking settlements. And that was that in this game, unless you're really desperate for cash, there's rarely a good reason to sack a settlement. And it's always a bad idea to, well, almost always a bad idea to, uh, well, actually, yes, definitely in this game, it's always a bad idea to exterminate it. Because it just destroys the population and that takes ages to rebuild. Um, however, in other mods, they found ways to make that decision actually more meaningful. Your Majesty. For example, if you play Europa Barbarorum 2, which is a total conversion mod for Medieval 2 that sets it in the Roman period, um, the Roman Republic, specifically. Um, Without question, sire. It has a whole thing whereby your commander's troops will expect to be allowed to sack the cities you take. They will expect to be allowed to do that. You know, that was a thing with the Romans and other armies of that era. There was It was an expectation that when you took a town, you would be allowed to rape and pillage it. It was like part of the part of your employment package, practically. And so if you take a lot of towns in Europe of Barbarorum and you just peacefully occupy and you don't sack them, eventually the troops get really angry about it and you start getting loads of army debuffs to morale and stuff. Which is re a really interesting system, I find. Sorry, just giving the cat some pets. He's being very adorable. Sorry, I don't have a webcam to show you. <laughs> Call the surplus population. See, in Rome Total War, it's not such a bad idea because you can just recruit a load of peasant units and then disband them in the city after you've exterminated the population so you have a bunch of loyal colonists, effectively. Which is, again, something the Romans did <laughs> in real life. But uh, you can't actually do that in Medieval 2, if I recall correctly. You can't, um, you can't mess with population directly by disbanding units in this game. Which is a little bit of a shame, actually. zoom the map in here a bit we've well we've made some progress we've taken Arentia. there's a little slither of, of valenwood right at the top here long way to go if we want to beat the thalmor completely but it's a good start right i'm sure they'll be on their way to deal yes, with this shortly what we probably could do with doing though soldiers win wars and these graves are the glory he's got the most movement points right now great. you do Hello. 
That's a rebel castle. Necromancers, huh? Interesting. What I want to build here is a watchtower. So we can see what's on the other side of the river. And what's on the other side of the river is... A dungeon fort full of necromancers. A castle with full of necromancers. And a little Thalmor dude with a unit with him. Tiny, tiny mini stack over there. I love it when mods make uh, watchtowers nice and cheap. Encourages you to actually use them. And we need to in this mod because we don't have spies. So watchtowers are super helpful. Actually, wasn't I going to build one up here? Yes, I was. Although, next turn, because he doesn't have enough movement points right now. Alright. Um, have we got some reinforcements we want to bring down here? You guys, maybe. That's that's the count. He can stay there. You guys, though. Get your asses down there. If, if, any, if nothing else, I'll use you guys to garrison Arentia while the army moves on forwards. Hold the law. Yeah, it's it's the trailer. It's the trailer music from Dragonborn, isn't it? Like for some reason, they've chucked that in the uh, in the campaign music folder for this mod, and it just feels really out of place, and I don't like it. It's one of many tiny little things that bother me with this mod that I could easily change, probably, if I actually wanted to. Like, it. like the Dragonborn being called Adrian, for example. No, I'm not kidding. The Dragonborn is called Adrian. Don't know why. <laughs> Very easily changed, if you know the file to go to. I believe it's the e export description unit dot text file. The old edu. I'm pretty sure that's. What, I've been a long time since I've modded Medieval Two, but I'm pretty sure that's where you have to go to find it. And you can rename him in there. But and he's not a Khajiit. Outrageous. The Empire is man's last. The uh, champion of Cyrodiil has a weird name as well. Uh, it's not as weird though uh, the champion of Cyrodiil has like a Breton name of some description it sounds French basically um, but yeah if you're playing the third era campaign or the Oblivion Crisis you do get the you get the champion of Cyrodiil and he has a he has a French Bretonish looking name like it. it's just weird that they decided to name them they gave they gave the Dragonborn a name and they gave the Champion of Cyrodiil a name, but they they didn't give the Nerevarine a name. They just called them the Nerevarine. Um, not sure what's going on with that. Never mind. Anyway. The Empire is man's last bastion. Suggest renaming him to Claudius, but he's wearing a horned helmet. Yeah, no, we can't have that. <laughs> No, it is always named like that, Django. There is no way to randomly assign a name to a specific character like that. It doesn't quite work that way in uh, Total War. Your orders, sire. Yeah, it's, the Oblivion music is nice, isn't it? The the ambient Elder Scrolls music when they play it, like the Oblivion soundtrack, the Skyrim soundtrack, and the Morrowind soundtrack, if you're playing as the Dunma factions, that fits in beautifully. It's lovely. Just don't need the random trailer music blasting out there from time to time. I'm not sure why it's there, but I don't particularly appreciate it. Also, we should totally take Aleswell. Apparently there's a bunch of rogue legionaries garrisoning the place. That actually looks really horrific to try and take. That's quite the garrison they have there. Flippin' heck. Maybe I'll just ignore it for now. For the I mean, to be fair, Maro and his Penitus Oculatus could probably chew through a lot of them, but... I forgot he's got Skull Crusher and the Mask of Clavicus Vile now. <laughs> But they could probably kill a lot of them, but it's still a pain in the bum. I smell weakness. Need to kill them, though. 
Hello, Wood Rain Mud. Welcome to the Twitch side of things. This mod isn't accurate at all. Too many spears. Yes, I know. <laughs> Far too many spears. The Empire is man with the glory of the Empire. And there isn't a single Dark Elf unit from Morrowind which can use throwing stars. It's an yes, outrage. Oh, is that Dune? I think that's Dune down there, isn't it? Yes, it is. I bet an Elsewhere campaign would be fun. Playing as uh, an Equinor or a Pelotine. Lots of desert battles with some fun Khajiit units. You know, all the cities would probably look fine. I have to assume that for the for Black Marsh, they went with the Aztec buildings and cities from the Kingdoms DLC. I'm, I'm assuming that's probably what they did there. I haven't played as them, though. Like it. End turn. Call in the Khajiit. No. But really playing Jazir the Khajiit. And Collins and Neverwinter Knight's character anyway. He's also in my lap receiving head scratches at the moment while we wait for the end turn to finish. Aren't ya? Yes. These end turns do take a while, don't they? It's just, uh, as I said, it's an unfortunate side effect of all the scripting. Um, medieval 2 mods with lots of scripts in them do have quite lengthy to end turn times. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Usually when I'm playing the game, I'm, I've got a YouTube video up on the other screen and I just watch that after hitting end turn. I'm used to it from like the Rome Total War days, like playing Playing Europa Barbarorum for Rome Total War back in, Jesus, when was like 2009? <laughs> Must have been like that, 2009, 2008. With its amazingly long end turn times. They ain't too bad. I mean, it's a bit like bit, bit like playing um, Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires, really, isn't it? I have a high tolerance for end turn times, generally speaking. I don't mind it too much. It, however, that said, if, if, if Medieval 2 does get a remaster, that will solve a lot of the problems. Because um, remastered Rome 2 has lightning fast end turn times. Even with scripting. I was playing a bit of Chivalry Total War today for Rome Remastered, and uh, yeah, it's got like a bajillion factions, that that mod now, and scripting and stuff, and the end turn times just, they're just so fast. Tolius has now got the commander of Fort Dunstad Ancillary, nice. Quentin Kippius has a guard dog. 
Caster Gel has General of Imperial Legion in Valenwood. Oh, that's cool. Got a title for that. That's pretty sweet. I mean, I want... I didn't want him to have it. I wanted bloody, um... Prince Ebel to have that, but never mind. I guess he's the Prince and High Chancellor. He doesn't get the title. Alright, we've fixed up Arentius Town Hall, which seems to have made quite a difference. Soldiers win wars. Where to put it? Caster Gerald. You. Born under the sign of the Lady. General of Imperial Legion in La Valenwood. Nice. at all times and under all conditions. Legged. All right, let's move all of you out. Move you in. There we go. You got a free slot there? Yeah, you do. Welcome to the party, Aranil. Now, the Imperial City. We're not actually not done with the ship right yet. However, I'm sure I saw a night chapter. Yeah, here we go, night chapter. So there's just some nonsense here about Tavo, the Yakudan spirit of the air. So I don't know what that's about, but I'm I'm hoping if we build that, we'll get the Knights of the Nine. Though I'm not sure if it works like that, honestly. If I go, where is it? Building browser. Guild points for available guilds. Religious Knight orders. Traction needs and governors with high piety and chivalry. Oh, there you go. There's another There's another incentive to have high chivalry. Looks like that's how you get the Knights of the Nine. And we can get points for fighting the undead and the Daedra. Recruiting elite units, building churches and stables. Fighting against the Orsima and some other cultures of a different religion. How to lose points. Huge loss for allying with the undead, Daedra, and Orsima. Or for conducting other evil activities such as the Necromancer's Guild. Becoming a vampire and necromancer by the special event. Or allying with some other religions. Interesting. Well, we currently have active consideration from religious knight orders. And I believe as the Empire, our religious knight order is the Knights of the Nine. So, hopefully soon, we'll be able to set up the Knights of the Nine. Your orders, sire. Question is, do I want to take Thormar Gate? There's a gaggle of undead in there. The Empire is man's last bastion. Wasn't I think I will. I mean, there's only a few undead in there. Um, you can hold out for five turns of siege, but in a siege, you have to fight everyone to the death anyway. So, I guess it doesn't matter so much. And I think what I'll do is I'll just... We'll get a battering ram up to the gate, smash it down, and we'll just send in the Dragonborn and his blades and watch him clear the whole town out. <laughs> I think that's what we'll do. Send in the Dragonborn and we'll send in Prince Ebel with his Penitus Oculatus and we'll just watch him murder all the undead. Hopefully that way we can do it without taking any real casualties. Love an assassin to get rid of him. Yeah, get likewise with the spies. You know how you, I'd mentioned earlier, you need, you need a thieves guild in order to get spies. Uh, if you want assassins, you need to have the Dark Brotherhood. And again, the Dark Brotherhood are much like the other guilds in that you need to attract them. The Dark Brotherhood with us currently have mild curiosity. You get points by having governors not present in settlements, low piety or chivalry of a governor or faction leader. Recruiting and using assassins, although we can't do that until we get the Dark Brotherhood, so I don't know why that's there. It seems wrong somehow. Unless maybe some other factions in the game can recruit assassins without the Dark Brotherhood. That might be the case, actually, to be fair. Uh, taverns and inns, declaring wars, successful missions. So, yeah, we lose points by governor's present, high piety or chivalry. Our governor, our faction leader, recruiting priests and failing guild missions. So, likewise, I think we need to 
attract the attention of the Dark Brotherhood in order to recruit assassins. You're kind of surprised I'm liking the, the Elder Scrolls mod. It's reached that point where it's playable now for me. Um, I I took a, people people have suggested this mod to me for years, and originally when they suggested it and I checked it out, the, it was in really early development and it was very rough. I don't think they even had a custom settlement, a custom you know, um, battle map settlement or anything for the Imperial City. Still, um, it was extremely rough, and at that point I was just like, no, I'm not interested. It's still very rough and glitchy and full of placeholders, but at the moment, it feels like it's developed enough to actually be worth playing now. Not to the point where I would consider doing a full Let's Play with it on YouTube, but to the point where we can have a giggle with it here on Twitch. The Empire is man's last bastion. Are there any evil orphanage owners we could utilize to attract the Dark Brotherhood? Where it's so easy, I'm afraid. Can we recruit anything in a rent here? We can. Town guards, spearmen, swordsmen, and imperial watch archers. Not much, but it's something. Well, if we are keeping this place, I suppose we'd better... Yeah, we'll have to build cleared fields, corn exchange, get all this stuff set up. Chapel of the Nine wouldn't hurt either. Neither would getting this priest down here. You want to go? Oh, could sure use a warm bed right about now. Oh, yeah, I could have re just recruited a galley from Skingrad. Popped it right there. Jumped my diplomat in there and sent him off to the Somerset Isles to talk to that other faction. Never mind, never mind, that ship has sailed. Or rather hasn't, I suppose, technically. We're just going to annex Valenwood. We're, we're doing this Tiber Septim style. We are going to conquer you all. None of this client kingdom bullshit. <laughs> Direct rule from Cyrodiil. The Empire is man's last bastion. Let's just hop up onto Skyrim, by the way, for a moment. How are things going here? We got some brigands wandering around. The measure of a man is taken at the moment of his death. And by brigands, we actually mean a bunch of Draugr. The ghosts of many heroes walk among us. And not a lot else. There's a Nordic diplomat. Greetings, most noble ally. Despite his color scheme, he's actually half Ingar. Right, you. Of Advent, Ad Adventus. Imperial business. Be on your way. The Legion has stepped in to keep order. Build me a watchtower there. Already taken care of. Imperial business. Be on your way. And build me a watchtower there. Already taken care of. There we go. Got a bit more line of sight. What is it? The waiting. The key to success in Medieval 2 is being able to see armies coming before they arrive. Wow. White Run's got like a full garrison right now. Kinda wish I could see what they've got in there. There's a little old Riverwood. And we got Helgen. Iverstead. Iverstead's practically abandoned right now. Look at, like, nobody in there. Look at that banner. It's virtually empty. Oh, it's so tempting to send some troopers down there to try and take the village. I would never be able to hold it, though. These ah, screw it. Each legionnaire must be his better self at all times and under all conditions. When in doubt, drop a save. For the glory of the Empire. In these grave times, each legionnaire must be his better self what at they all times there? and under all conditions. They've got Huon Scar Head Smasher. We're taking the city. Meet the soldiers gathering for the attack. Move. And they got some Stormcloaks and two handed weapons. I assume Arentus. 
You have, you are General of the six, Seventh Legion. As if we've got seven legions. <laughs> Commander of Helgen, and you have an astrologer, apparently. You're an Imperial, you're an aspiring commander, religiously proper, bastion of chivalry, not constructive. Oh dear, you're a rubbish governor then. Right, let's... Wait, no. The waiting. The insufferable waiting. Yes, you do have general's bodyguards, excellent. That's all I wanted to know. If you got the good cavalry. Arguably, I should probably auto resolve this. I would get a better result, I imagine, but no, we'll do it properly. The stars are right, and this is the day. Oh, the the picture for um, if you're doing a third era campaign with uh, Uriel Septim on the throne, the picture for him is literally just Patrick Stewart in a wig. And the picture for Martin is um, is just a it's just a picture of Sean Bean. <laughs> Units, await my orders. All right, is there? Here's Iverstead. Elder Scrolls Total War Edition. Doesn't look much like the Iverstead we're familiar with, but hey. Can't even see the throat of the world very well from here. I guess this is kind of the foothills of it. But, um, as I said before, the way I like to think of the um, settlements and the scale of this mod is that this isn't Tamriel as it appears in um, you know, the main three games. It's Tamriel as it appears in Arena and Daggerfall. Big square towns, huge, huge wilderness. I mean, honestly, you go up on this hill here, that looks like a town in Daggerfall Unity. Just there, get the cav here. I'd like to tempt them out of the town if possible, but I have a little fishy feeling that might not work. Let's see if we can get our guys over here and at least see the archer shooting them. Otherwise we're going to have to go in there and hack them to pieces, which is not really what I want to do. I want to get them somewhere I can charge them with the cavalry. Where's the other unit? They got General's bodyguards there. Where are the Stormcloaks with the two-handed swords? There they are. All right, hold on. You get over there, Geralt of Rivia. You can probably charge these lads in the flank without running into too many pathfinding issues. This is oblivion music. Yes, it is. It has appropriate Elder Scrolls music, this mod. I haven't played as a High Rock faction, but it'd be kind of funny if you played as the Kingdom of Daggerfall and you got Daggerfall music. <laughs> feel a bit weird in that place, but I mean, hearing the Daggerfall shop theme on the campaign map would be just 10 out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, you could add it in yourself. It, once you've got everything unpacked, it's actually quite easy to add modded music to uh, Rome and Medieval 2, I think, from what I recall. I used to do it. I think I made a music mod for Rome once. Uh, you see, guys, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. I wanted you to charge, you know, blow the horn, gallop really fast, lower the lances to in front of you, not slowly canter up to them like you're in a show, and then bop bump them on the head with your sword. That's not how this works. You clowns. Alright, you guys go shoot them with your bows. Try 
try it again. See, now I'm really missing the Rome 2 and Attila, you know, zoom cinematic zoom cam. Where the camera follows the charging horseman and you can zoom in and stuff. That's really good. Also, this is just pitiful. Oh my god, you've been sitting in Helgen for too long. You don't know how to actually do war anymore. This is pathetic. Maybe if I adopt a much thinner formation. Because unit formation and having whether or not they've got enough space for it is, is usually most most of the time it's the cause of pathfinding issues. Which is why playing with huge unit sizes is, you know, a bit of a double-edged sword because on the one hand it looks so much cooler with huge unit sizes, while on the other hand it fucks up the pathfinding royally. There's an excellent mod for this game called Insularis Draco, which is set on the British Isles and North Northern Gaul um, in the 5th century, just after the Romans have pulled out of Britannia. Um, so you've got all the Brit Britain factions, the Romans in Gaul, you've got the Franks, the Saxons, the Angles, the Jutes, the Picts, the Gaels, the Irish kingdoms, all of that stuff. It's a fantastic mod. Um, but specifically with that mod, you're supposed to play it on small unit sizes because that's the historically accurate army sizes for that period. Um, and so I do play that mod with small unit sizes. It's the only mod that I do play it with. And my god, it's amazing how much it actually improves the battles. There we go. We figured it out. Third time's the charm. It was the, it was the formation width that was the problem. As it turns out. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. You guys still shooting these boys? They're not taking the bait, are they, these, these lads? Very disappointingly. Let me try and shift you guys over here a little bit so you've got a slightly better line of sight. Ah, they're retreating to the town square. And the Empire engine. Oh man, Empire Total War and Cavalry. What a. <laughs> what an iconic compo. <laughs> oh dear. I don't think you guys are going to properly charge, are you? Oh, maybe you are. There's the trumpet. You going to do this for me? Oh, you legends. Well done. Fine work there. Right, get back out. Oh, we've got arrows raining down as well. That doesn't help. There's no easy way around this, is there? We're just going to have to get in there and slug it out with them. Oh, hello. Oh, never mind. I got my hopes up there. I thought they were coming out to get me. But no. On the other hand, you've positioned yourselves perfectly to get shot at with arrows. Yeah, no. By all means, stand there if you like. Man, look how many that cavalry charge killed, though. That's a lot of dead storm cloaks. Badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Shogun dude did charge quite yeah, it does. Attila has very good cavalry charges as well. At least I think it does anyway.
you never played Attila. I didn't really very much at all until this year, and I'm absolutely in love with it. Performance issues aside, what an excellent title war game Attila turned out to be. Made even better by the amazing mods for it these days. Yes, face away from the archers. That'll... 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 That'll do the trick. One of the best things about Attila, since we're on the subject, is that the town square in Attila does not give units infinite morale. So you can fight your way to the town square, and then if you break their morale, they'll run away anyway. They'll just scatter into the countryside. And it's amazing how much it improves siege battles as a result. Which Attila mods do you recommend? So depending on what historical time period you want to play, there's a few choices. You guys are going to charge properly? Not really. Never mind. Um, Ancient Empires is really good if you want to play the sort of classical period. So Roman Republic, Carthage, the Greeks, all that good stuff. Um... It's essentially Rome 2 almost, but in the Attila engine in a way, but it, it, it is and it isn't. You know, it's actually, gameplay-wise, it's very different from Rome 2, but it's the same time period. Um, if you want to play the Middle Ages, there's actually, I think, two medieval mods for it now. There's 1212 AD, and I think there's another one called Medieval Warfare. And it's up to you which one you prefer on that one, really. Um, if you like the Viking period... Then there's a, there's there's a mod called Viking Warfare, I think, or is it Age of Viking? There's a Viking mod that's pretty decent, basically. Um, and if you want to play the original Attila time period, as in the fall of the Roman Empire, um, there's a combo of mods you can get that I really recommend: Fall of the Eagles. And Europa Perdita, and you can you, there's a there's a sub mod that combines the two of them together, and that's really good, mega hard. I'm doing a West Roman Empire campaign at the moment with Fall of the Eagles and Europa Perdita, and it's it's no fucking joke. It's very difficult, but that is sort of the point. Western Roman Empire, whether you're playing Attila or Barbarian Invasion, the whole point is that it is the ultimate challenge. So I don't mind it. Attila has absolutely sensational siege battles, man. I absolutely love it. I uh, recently, I, I, before I started my West Roman Empire campaign, I was doing an East Roman Empire campaign, and I, I, I did a successful siege of the Sassanid capital. I don't remember how to pronounce it. That's why I'm not naming it. But it's one of those towns with a difficult name. Um, <laughs> but I successfully besieged it and then did an assault after sieging it down enough that the uh, the garrison had been you know, mostly died off from attrition. Uh, I think we'll put the swordsman up front. It's time to go in, isn't it, really? There's no way around this. Um, and the siege battle was just absolutely epic. I put, I posted, even posted some screenshots on Discord. Just taking the walls, knocking down the towers, um... Oh, it's so cool. It was just so good. And it's just, and it's, it's a tiller as well. So it has proper, like, pathfinding that actually works. You know, you can put the siege towers on any bit of wall you like. You don't have to just do it in sections. It's real good. Warhammer Sieges are kind of weird, not a huge fan. I get what they were trying to do with that by focusing it down on a particular section of the city and therefore focusing all of the uh, all of the fighting in one area as opposed to sieges in the earlier Total War games where it'd be kind of like 
kind of a, a fairly small army spread out all over a giant city, which didn't look very realistic. So I get what they were trying to achieve there, but I think the, the, the general consensus seems to be that it wasn't a really great idea. I think people prefer it the old way. Nords to die like... Well, Nords. Make your ancestors proud. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the... You can crow about how the Empire has no honor when you get to Sovereign Guard, not before. <laughs> I've only played a little bit of Three Kingdoms, I'm afraid. You didn't charge again. You... Oh, guys, why? I've only played a little bit of Three Kingdoms. Um, my issues with that game basically come down to the fact that... A. I have little to no interest in that time period. And, and usually that isn't a problem for a Total War game. The thing with Total War games is they make me interested in the time period. If it's a good game, it'll make me take an interest in that time period, you know. I wasn't super into the Sengoku Jidai period of Japanese history until I played the original Shogun Total War. And then suddenly I was like, wow, this is really interesting. So that's not necessarily an issue, the fact that I'm not super into that period of Chinese history. The problem with it, I found, is that it is neither a historical game nor is it a fantasy game it's an annoying mixture of the two it's effectively as you, yeah it's hero hammer essentially it's uh it's um it's a game where your general characters can kill like a thousand dudes by themselves because the game is ultimately about the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, right? It's not based on actual history. It's based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is a bit like making a Total War game based on the Arthurian legends. As in, it's full of bullshit that's made up. And that's kind of the point. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors Total War. Effectively, yes. Um... Purely in terms of gameplay, it's an excellent game, actually. Um, the game has really good performance. It's incredibly well optimized. It has an excellent diplomacy system. Um, it's gorgeous. It looks beautiful. Um, oh, you actually charged properly that time. Nice one. The battles are quite fun. Um... But, yeah, it's the fact that it's based on kind of... Uh, not not actually history, but a sort of weird mythical legend that I'm not that into. All and don't know anything about. That's the main problem I have. That's what's... Have I struggle today. to get into it because I don't know anything about the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. And the game does a really terrible job of explaining any of it to you. Like, you have no idea who any of these characters are, why you should care about them why you might get invested in one faction over the other in, in terms of playing as them. Like, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know how to pronounce any of their names. And I don't know what they stand for or anything. And I, I find it impossible to get invested in any of them. When I play a faction in that game, I practically throw a dart at a dartboard and just see which one... I you pick one at random, you know, because you might as well, because that's about... The game doesn't give you any useful information. You know, like how, you know like when you used to play Rome Total War back in the day and when you picked a faction, it gave you a, man, a fantastic cinematic intro. You know, it gave you one for the, the Julii, the Scipii, the Brutii, the Greeks, the Carthaginians, 
all the playable factions had a cool cinematic intro that in a very short space of time delivered to you exactly what the vibe of that faction was and what they were all about um whereas three kingdoms doesn't seem to do that the monk in medieval two. yeah same same deal in medieval two you had the monk in in the cutscenes for the each campaign start who told you about the faction what they were doing and all that kind of thing so that was that was kind of my other problem with the three kingdoms is it just it's like okay all right it's based on a period of history and a mythical legend i'm not familiar with that's fine you can do that but you've got to explain this shit to me and the game doesn't explain it to you so it's sort of it's a game for people who already know a ton about the romance of three three kingdoms if you don't know anything about it then you're probably going to struggle getting into it like i did which is a shame because like purely in terms of game mechanics it's really good uh well yeah we'll just occupy it i don't i i can i can i can live without the 43 septums i would gain <laughs> We'd kill 200 people and get 43 septims by emptying out their pockets. That's just, no, let's not do that. <laughs> Good grief. Build a little watchtower here. Uh, oh, crap. You're not going to be able to get back to the town in time, are you? And I can't fix it with lowering taxes either. All right, fine. Just... And you don't have enough movement to get out. All right, some of you are going to die to rioting pretty soon. Um, whoops. Thought I had enough movement points there to get away with that, but I didn't. Anyway, there you go. There's my incredibly long-winded opinion on 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 Three Kingdoms: Total War. As a as a game, it's pretty good, but I really struggled to get into it. I've played it a little bit. I enjoyed doing a few battles. I it didn't manage to keep me playing it for very long though. Is the problem? Because when I, when I play Total War games, I like to get really immersed in the setting. You know, in the history, in the characters, in the faction I'm playing get really immersed in it you know um and i wasn't able to do that with three kingdoms and so i ended up not playing it for very long as a result that's all You, you like that era, era in history forever, Furious? Well, excellent, then. Go for it, man. Like, man, if you're, if you're really into that that stuff, you'll probably fucking love the game. You'll probably, like, clock a thousand hours on it before you even know what's happening. Because it is a very good game. Probably bloody love it, mate. I can't get over how gorgeous Three Kingdoms Total War is. Every time I play it, on the rare occasions I do, I'm always sitting there taking screenshots all the time. It's a bloody beautiful game. And it runs so well as well. It's like so well optimized. You don't like Hero Hammer and you were Total War games? Well, you can do this thing with it where you, ter you can go, you have romance mode and records mode. And records mode is essentially Creative Assembly just throwing a bone to the historical crowd a little bit. And if you if you do a campaign with records mode enabled, what it does is it makes the hero characters basically just generals with a bodyguard unit, like in like in this game. Um, still, usually quite a powerful bodyguard unit, but it's a little less insane than just one random dude running around killing thousands of people. Um, so you got that, you know. If you specifically don't want the hero hammer, then uh, then just enable records mode. And you should have a good time with it, I think. Do you 
I think it all, it all a lot of it comes down to the fact that the Creative Assembly uh, did in ridiculously well with the Warhammer franchise. Um, they they have made absurd amounts of cash with that series, and now they've gone through a bit of a period where they're just trying to inject fantasy into everything they do now because they feel like it sells more. They might be right, for all I know. But, uh, it ain't my bag, generally speaking. I'm not sat here playing, you know... I mean, this is ironic, really, because I'm playing a fantasy mod right now, but... <laughs> I've spent the last month or so playing Attila, let's put it that way. I've spent the last month playing Attila and not Total Warhammer 3. Not only have they made loads of money from 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 Warhammer as well, but they have. There's loads of people still playing it too. Like if you go on like the Steam charts and see like sort by like number of people still playing, you look at all the Total War games. Like um, Total Warhammer Three is has tens of thousands more people playing it than the next most popular Total War game on the list. It's redonkulously popular. It's been a massive success for them, so I I can see why. They're trying to borrow elements from it in their other games. I can totally see why. Right, we're going to do one more battle tonight, folks, and then we're going to call it, I think. We're going to go kill some undead. Or, or try our best to, anyway. What do we got? Bunch of armored zombies. Again, crappy stats, but they're unbreakable, so... And some skeletons, which are a bit better. Interesting that the archers have better defense than the skeletons. And the regular skeletons, I mean. Kind of weird, that. But okay. It's just a rampaging horde of skeletons and zombies led by a necromancer. Get down to the front line. Up with that, we shall not put. I'd love a new historical Total War game from from Creative Assembly, like a proper, yeah, 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 um, a proper historical game, mainline proper historical game with no fantasy bullshit, just just the history, taking all the lessons they've learned from and and you know technological developments they've made from the Warhammer series. Oh look, I forgot you can do shield wall with some of these units. Ah. Yeah, some of the Legion units can do shield wall. I totally forgot about that. That might be useful in this battle. Um... Alright, there's our archers. Off we go. So look at the undead, shall we? Skeletons! Oh my god, they're actually oblivion skeletons, aren't they? Or are they? they can't, I can't tell. Are they, actually, I think they're Morrowind ones. As if I could tell the difference, that's how much goddamn Elder Scrolls nerd I am. I think they're Morrowind skeletons. Not, not talking about the weapons and shields, just the actual models of the skeletons themselves. Sure, maybe they are oblivion ones. Or maybe it's just the pastoral setting that's throwing me off. Either way, they do look legit. There's the zombies. With curved swords! Good grief. There's the skelly archers. Who have now disappeared in the woods. Alright, I'm not, not fighting you on a slope if I can help it at all. You cheeky devils. I see you're not, you're not, you're not in formation here. Alright, just, fuck it. 
Time six speed. Get yourselves back in formation. Them definitely Morrowind skulls. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alright, we're going to come up this. I'm, I'm not fighting you on a slope if I can help it, but I tell you what, I'm definitely not fighting you in the middle of a fucking forest. Forest battles suck. Not interested. I'd like a Genghis Khan Total War. If we're going to spitball about potential future Total War games we'd like to see, I would like to see Genghis Khan Total War. And it uses a map that's about as big as the Immortal Empires one. Maybe a little less big. And it extends from China all the way to Western Europe. And it centers chiefly around the rise of Genghis Khan. Because Genghis Khan's a big fucking deal in history, isn't he? And he hasn't had his own Total War game yet. The Mongols' best appearance has been in Medieval 2 as an emergent faction later in the game. And that's no good. We can do better than that. Attila, the bloody Hun, got his own game. <laughs> but not Genghis. What's that about, eh? Empire 2 is another option, yeah. You could do Empire 2, but again, with a with a Immortal Empires-sized map that is pretty much basically the whole globe. Empire Total War, but you've got the whole planet. Not split off into different sections like it was in the first Empire, just the whole world in the 18th century for you to go out there and conquer. How sick would that be, right? The game has to sell. I mean, that's the thing, right? I, mean, I don't know what on earth they were thinking with Troy. I mean, is there really that much interest in the friggin' Iliad that they thought a Total War game about Troy was going to sell really well? As a classics major, yes, but I didn't buy it, so... <laughs> yeah. I haven't bought it. I've played virtually every Total War game to date, and I still haven't played Troy. Uh, to be fair, though, I've heard Troy's pretty decent these days. Because they, 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 they updated it quite a bit after release. Originally, they, they tried to do the Three Kingdoms thing, didn't they? Where it was, like, half fantasy, half real. And uh, kind of pleased absolutely nobody as a result. But since then, they've they've changed it so you can play the original half fantasy, half real campaign, or you can play a fully mythological campaign with mythological beasts and all sorts of craziness, um, or you can play a far more historical one, which has basically all of that removed, and you're essentially just playing with Bronze Age units. And both of those options sound quite fun, actually. It doesn't help that the last historical game they did do, which was Thrones of Britannia, got widely panned either, actually. I mean, let's def you have to look at it from their perspective, right? It's like, the last historical game we did was Thrones of Britannia, and everybody hated it. Since then, we've been doing Total Warhammer, and everybody adores it. You know? It's, it's therefore not a very hard decision to make if you're Creative Assembly as to what you want to focus on.
Having said that, though, apparently um, Friends of Britannia these days, if you install the shield wall overhaul, is actually very good, so... Trust the modders to fix it, I guess. I, you know what, I, I actually enjoyed my time with Thrones of Britannia when it first released as well, but the thing is, I didn't play it for long enough for the problems to really start showing. However, apparently with the shield wall overhaul, it is actually, it does turn it into a really excellent historical total war game. I actually have it installed right now. I have Thrones of Britannia with shield wall installed right now, but I haven't had the chance to muck about with it yet. I was going to, and then I discovered that Insularis Draco exists, and I ended up playing that instead for a while. Because <laughs> I really dig the Arthurian period, the sort of 5th century period of, of, of Dark Age Britain. More so than the Viking period. Alright, you skeletons. I'm going to give you a cavalry charge in the face and see how you, you cope with it. You lot, meanwhile. Shield wall. At what point did I say stop in the middle of the, she uh, the, the field and be shot at with arrows? You imbecile cavalry, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. Why are you so bad at everything, Cavalry? Why? God, Cavalry sucks so much. Don't shoot the skeleton, shoot the zombies instead. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. You're just getting tangled up in the zombies, aren't you? And it's not going to work. Yep, that's exactly what happened. You guys have any luck over here at least? Not much. The problem is, the Imperial Scouts are crap. Even if they get a charge off, they're basically rubbish. And we're going to have to kill these undead the old-fashioned way, I think. No, 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 don't, don't. Just let them come to you. Stay in the shield wall formation. Let them come to you. Here we go. Gotta say, it's pretty cool, actually. Where are they all? Benedictus Oculatus. Go on. You guys can practically solo a unit of skeletons all by yourselves, so... I think you can probably do a lot better than that, really. Oh, these zombies chasing the cavalry they are, aren't they? Alright, cavalry, go charge the zombies. The zombies are so bad that even you should be able to make a good impact. Okay, it's quite funny that the zombies have human screams. Uh, not gonna lie. That's pretty amusing. Ow, I'm a zombie and I just got hit by a horse. It hurts. The pikemen doing, they poking the zombies to death. Good, good, good. How many old Pinnitus Oculatus boys doing? Murdering lots of skellies, I hope. Problem is, you're getting pelted with arrows, and that's bad. I need you to not be pelted by arrows right now. Annoyingly, though, they do have a lot of archers. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Oh, it's half the zombies killed. All right, you know what? Honestly, just chase them if you have to. As long as they're not shooting us. 
Actually, you know what? You guys are pretty much free. Oh! Lovely! There's a necromancer. It's a shame that the entire army doesn't just drop dead once you've killed the necromancer, but I guess it doesn't work that way, huh? That would make it a little too easy to uh, defeat the undead in this game, I suppose. Stop shooting. Don't need you accidentally killing my cavalry. Alright, that made an impact. You are still struggling a bit with these archers, but hey. If you can do that and again a few more times, you'll have destroyed them all. I don't really want to see a World War One Total War game. It would be too much of a departure from the Total War formula. You can't, in my opinion, you can't do anything with Total War that does not involve blocks of regiments of troops moving around a battlefield. That, if you if you go beyond that, it ceases to be Total War for me. That is just my opinion. But I think that's just how it is for me, personally. I kind of like what Petroglyph are doing with the Great War. That's pretty interesting. But that's a totally different experience from playing a Total War game. And even then, the, the, the real problem that Petroglyph's Great War has at the moment, based on the demo we've all played, I say we've all played, that I've played, is that even within the space of the demo, it was already starting to become a bit repetitive. Like, um, that, that game is going to struggle to strike the balance between faithful representation of what World War I was actually like and actually creating a fun game that's actually enjoyable to play. Oculus doing they are <laughs> murdering their way through these skeletons excellent stuff I think they've only lost one guy almost done with these zombies You guys help finish off the skeletons. Cav, go take care of those archers. I say take care of them. Make a dent in them. doing go over here please all right you guys are done with them all right here's some more <laughs> they are exhausted apparently but never mind off you go
Thing is, though, we can sit here and whinge about wanting a new historical Total War game. However, the reality is, when it comes to if you want to play a, a, a historical Total War experience, you are fucking spoiled for choice these days, thanks to mods. It is ridiculous the amount of options you have out there now. the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Even just within this one game right here, Medieval 2, you, you have an uh, absurd number of options for historical Total War stuff. I mean, you can play everything. In Medieval 2, you can play anything from, in addition to all the fantasy mods for it, you can play from, like, the Roman era all the way up to, like, the Battle of Waterloo, pretty much. Just in this game. not That's not even counting Rome Total War, Rome 2, Attila, and all their mods. Oops, I, I didn't actually mean for you to retreat. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the... Yeah. <laughs> I guess you have to feel a little bit bad for the necromancer, huh? <laughs> This is his life's work we're destroying here. It'd be kind of funny if the skeletons shrieked like the ones in Daggerfall. Yeah, there's a 30 years war mod for it. I can't promise the AI is very good because the Total War AI has um, issues with Pike and Shop Warfare. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't totally understand how the whole concept works, but there is a 30 years war mod for, for Medieval 2. It's the sort of mod that you want to just play on the hardest possible difficulty and be very forgiving of the, uh, the AI. Yeah, we did kill an Ekman, so he dead. Pretty sure we killed him in a cavalry charge. the last ones alive when we kill all these the battle will be over I think is that it it's all of them there we go that goes to only men of great virtue and valor the only the Mara only lost two guys in his unit during that battle Good grief. Heck of a kill count, everybody. Well done. Yeah, that's the big breakthrough, isn't it? They've had recently the um, the Lord of the Rings mod team for Attila. They've finally managed to figure out a way to modify the game's map and have the AI still function correctly on it. Because... Uh, <sighs> One of Creative Assembly's more boneheaded decisions over the years was not giving us the ability to edit the, the map in their newer games. I'll make sure the it's the one thing that was really holding back Rome 2 and Attila in terms of modding was the ability, the inability for you to edit the map. Um, and I say boneheaded, like we're, they're somehow obligated to give us proper modding tools. They're not. It's just nice when they do. Um, but the finally, X number of years later, yeah, some the, the guys doing the Lord of the Rings mod have actually managed to figure out a way to edit the map in Attila and actually 
have the uh, the AI use the map properly because that was the problem. They knew how you knew how to actually physically change the map. The problem was getting the campaign AI to actually use the new settlements and stuff you'd put down because otherwise previously they would just ignore it uh, and it wouldn't work properly. Um, but now they've somehow managed to figure out a way to do it, um, which opens the door for people to make a lot of really, really cool mods on the Attila engine now. And presumably, it will also work for Rome 2 as well. So... All right, Mauro, job done, me old lad. You need to get down here to Skingrad. It wasn't long before I saw more of the world than I bargained for. Attack me again, and I'll hunt you down. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, though, that is us done for this evening. I've played for... We've been at this for ages. Been streaming for frippin' ages. I think we started around 5 o'clock-ish. Um, I'll save this game. We may return to this. We may not, on the other hand. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Six hours, really? Has it been that long? Good God. Didn't feel like it. But yes, yeah, so we've been playing this a while, <laughs> apparently. Uh, okay, well, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy. That is The Elder Scrolls Total War. It's um, still needs some work, but it's it's very playable and a lot of fun, even in its current state, as I think you've probably seen tonight. Do recommend giving it a go. Um, of course, there are loads and loads of other mods available for Medieval 2. If you've never played Medieval 2 modded before, you really should. The mods available available for this game are insane. They're so, so, so good. Um, but anyway, if I don't do any more of this, and I will see you on YouTube with a Total War Let's Play in the near future, hopefully, as well. Um, I think it's going to be a Rome 2 Let's Play. I, I couldn't decide for a while because there are so many options to, these days in terms of Total War mods, in terms of what I wanted to play. Um, I was torn for a while between playing Europa Barbarorum 2 for this game or playing Divide et Impera for Rome 2 and I've, I've decided finally to go with Divide et Impera for Rome 2 because I think it'll just make for a better series. So... That's what I'm going to do at some point. Yeah, it's just funny. I really... I hated Rome 2 for years. Especially when it came out. When it first came out, the game was a disaster, to be fair. And to be honest with you, I mean, the last time I badmouthed Rome 2 on the channel, I think it still was a bit of a dodgy game, honestly. Um, but since then... Uh, the developer they, they got creative assembly got a separate dev team working on it if I recall correctly making additional DLC and patches for it um, because I know for a fact that the Imperator Augustus and Empire Divided campaigns weren't out the last time I played Rome 2 um, but since then they've uh, you know they've the game has been fixed up a ton and there's a bunch of really nice mods available for it now and it's just really good. It's just, it's actually quite excellent. And I think I do want to do a let's play of it. DVD date Impera is very fun as Rome. I'm sure it is, although I'm not going to be playing as Rome. I'm going to be playing as a different faction entirely. If I was going to play as Rome, I think I would, I would probably play Europa Barbarorum 2. I, I quite like their Roman campaign. I think I may maybe like it slightly more. Because I love the whole Cursus Honorum system they have there for characters. Like, Europa Barbarum 2 is is really awesome for if you want to do character role-playing. Because it just has the most amazing trait system and scripts and stuff. It's really, really cool. The, the, the downside is that it is still under the hood Medieval 2 and therefore the battles can occasionally suck especially the siege battles they really do suck um but the campaign gameplay for eb2 is really nice so it was a hard choice because i was basically deciding between 
EB2's campaign and Rome 2's battles, and in the end, Rome 2's battles won out because. I mean, it's a total war game. You've got to have you've got to have enjoyable battles at the end of the day. Otherwise, what are you doing? Ancient Empires for Attila also got a, gets an honourable mention. But um, having tried them both, I think I prefer Dividea at Impera slightly more. It's just a bit more polished. It's been in the oven for longer, you know, so... Ancient Empires, though, I'm sure one in the future, though, is going to mature into a really amazing mod. It already is a pretty amazing mod, but in the future, now they can edit the map and stuff like that, it's going to be super, super good. I re There's a lot of things I really like about DVD at Impera. One of my favourite things is actually a relatively small thing, but it's the baggage trains. I think that's such a great idea. Because in every Total War game you play, when you deploy into a battle, your army is just standing there in a field. Where in reality, they'd have a baggage train, they'd have tents, they'd have a camp set up, they'd have, you know, people carrying all of their shit around with them. Um, and in Divide et Impera, you can recruit a unit called the baggage train, which is basically a huge unit of people round and around on horses and donkeys carrying all the equipment and in the on the battlefield itself they have an aoe bubble around them that allows you to dole out extra ammunition to the um to the missile troops your archers and whatnot such a great idea and on the campaign map it also gives you supply bonuses and stuff because they have a supply system for armies whereby if they're out in the field for too long they'll start to starve to death and you can help mitigate that with having by having a baggage train Which is pretty sweet. And it's also got a really good population system they've totally modded into the game as well. Don't know how they did that. Black magic, I suspect. Putting a, pop, a totally brand new population system into a game that didn't have one to begin with. But they did that as well, which is actually very clever and very well implemented too. Until the mods don't have baggage trains. No, unfortunately they don't. Unfortunately not. It's just a great little feature though, I love it. You remember Europe and Barbarum, the first one? Brilliant mod. Yeah, it is it is just seriously good. There's a unofficial port of EB for Rome Remastered that's pretty good too, actually. It's just good old fashioned EB, but with nice, slightly prettier graphics and uh, much faster end turn times. <laughs> So I do recommend that as well, actually. Just anti-personal preference, really. I quite hit, like EB2 for Medieval 2 just because it's a bit prettier. And um, they fleshed out some of the uh, campaign mechanics a bit more in EB2. Anyway, folks, I'm done for the night. Hope you've had a good one. I'll catch you... And I see, whenever I see you next, um, I don't yet know if I'm going to be streaming tomorrow. I'll 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 let you know via Twitter and on the Discord thing as usual. If I do go live, I don't know yet though. Got stuff going on. So anyway, cheers, Bedez. I'll see you when I see it. Toodaloo.